a little help from Ohio State, it would appear. That game's getting close to finishing, and Wisconsin has an opportunity to win its way into the Rose Bowl, but Iowa has an opportunity to at least claim a share of the Big Ten crown. It's largely thanks to that guy. No running attack to help him. Drew Tate leading the Hawkeyes against the Badgers in moments. All right, Michigan and Ohio State. They are inside 90 seconds to play now, and Ohio State is going to end Michigan's bid for a perfect Big Ten record. 37-21, the Buckeyes are going to wash away some of the bad taste from their 6-4 and four season coming in by getting their seventh win of the year, 37-21. Working our way toward Iowa and Wisconsin, and after this, Wisconsin will be able to get into the Rose Bowl if they can beat Iowa. Guys, got about five seconds. What do you look for in this Story game? Story is Drew Tate. Ten touchdowns, only four interceptions. Can he get it done? The Wisconsin defense. Can Erasmus James and those guys get it done after last game? And we'll keep you up to date on Alabama-Auburn as well, but now Wisconsin and Iowa. All right, Reese, the atmosphere here in Iowa City at Kinesi Stadium is absolutely electric. Here's why. It basically boils down to a Big Ten championship game. These are the current standings, but Ohio State is poised to win, which means that Wisconsin, if they win, they go to the Rose Bowl. If Iowa wins today against Wisconsin, they would earn a share of the Big Ten title. It has been a compelling season in the conference. Put it on the ground. It's still live. Wisconsin ball. What a turnaround. A cataclysmic turn of events. The lethal efficiency of Scott Stark's hit turned the Big Ten upside down. Destiny divorcing the Boilermakers and bonding with the Badgers. Wisconsin's defense suffocating opponents on its way to potential BCS bling. But last week against Michigan State, Wisconsin had the attitude, but not the altitude. Their crash landing leaving their title hopes in question. Meanwhile, Iowa has snickered in the face of adversity and snuck up on the conference's elite. Drew Tate's talents both unpredictable and undeniable, leading Iowa to six straight wins. Today, bowl games hang in the balance. Wisconsin, Iowa. Well, it's not exactly ESPN HD, but every fan tailgating here in Iowa City keeping close eye on the Ohio State-Michigan game, and it looks like they're going to get their result, a Buckeye win with just seconds to go. It is senior day, which means that Matt Roth, one of 15 seniors, is ready to pump up the volume and ready to hear it from the hometown fans. They have won 17 straight games here at Kinnick Stadium. It has been a torture chamber for visiting teams. Number nine, Wisconsin against number nine, at number 17, Iowa. Big things on the line for both teams. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. Thanks for coming aboard. The importance, magnitude of this game growing by the second. Bob, last week, Wisconsin faced a very good rushing attack in Michigan State. This week against Iowa, a different type of challenge. Well, Mark, Wisconsin's defensive game plan is obvious. Put a target on Iowa's quarterback, Drew Tate, and find a way to harass him all afternoon. Because Iowa cannot run the football, that sounds pretty simple. But the problem, Drew Tate is the hottest quarterback in the Big Ten right now. This guy is amazing at avoiding the rush and making plays down the field. Mark, I'm going to give you a strong statement right give off the me. bat. This guy reminds me of a young Doug Flutie. Ooh. Looking for maybe a Hail Mary today from Tate. Who knows? Big things on the line in just a few moments on Senior Day. Who's going to take the Big Ten? We'll find out. ESPN's College Football Saturday, brought to you by Seiko. You can tell more about a person by the watch they wear than anything else. And the new singular, raising the bar. Pontiac presents ESPN's College Football Rivalry Weekend. Welcome back, everyone, to a very raucous Kinnick Stadium. Wisconsin against Iowa. Let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Guys, Wisconsin has had some bad news. Their running back, Anthony Davis, will not start this game, and they're not sure how effective he will be if he plays at all. He is suffering from a quad injury. He has very little, if any, strength in his quad, making it impossible for him to get hard yards. As a result, Matt Bernstein, the fullback, will become their starter at tailback. 
The last time he started, though, against Penn State, he came in and had 123 yards, so they feel confident behind the bigness of Matt Bernstein. Yeah, he's a tough load at about 265, Holly, and uh, Davis, meanwhile, coming off a good performance last week. Meanwhile, Iowa winning the toss, and is their, their custom, they choose to receive. Back deep, it's Bellius and Sims. In the end zone, it'll be Sims, and they'll start off on their own 20-yard line. Let's take a look at the updated Big Ten standings, folks. This boils down to a Big Ten championship game. Michigan losing their first conference game, so Wisconsin, Michigan, and Iowa all with one loss. And Mark, I got to say this. There's only one person more disappointed about Ohio State winning today more than Lloyd Carr. That's that? Maurice Claret. I promise you, Maurice Claret is this as disappointed as Lloyd Carr right now but what a great win for Ohio State seem to have galvanized the Buckeyes let's see who takes advantage of the situation that's Sam Brownlee in the backfield brought down by Dantez Sanders a loss about two on the play let's take a look at the lineups and we'll start with the quarterback Drew Tate who we were talking about a few moments ago from Baytown Texas a very precocious sophomore these guys behind him, Sam Brownlee, an interesting story, a fifth string former walk on, a leading receiver on the team, meanwhile, Ed Hinkle. And this offensive line has given up a lot of sacks. Mark, they'll be under siege today. They've given up 33 sacks. And if it wasn't for Drew Tate with his escapability, it could be 53 sacks. They're going to run it. This is Mickens straight ahead between the tackles. That Wisconsin defense ready to make a statement today a lot of people were whispering about them not being able to handle the spotlight and let's take a look at that defense the studs up front are James and Hawthorne Mark don't worry about this Wisconsin defense they flat got embarrassed last week this is maybe the best defense in the country they also know that Ohio State won today I would want this defense on my side if I was playing for a Rose Bowl berth if which Wisconsin, they are yep, if Wisconsin wins they go to Pasadena third down and ten Drew Tate going to work out of the shotgun. That's what he did a lot in high school. And we have flags down on the field. A little motion up front. Prior to the snap, Illegal snap infraction, number 54 on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Well, guys, the pregame warm-ups for Wisconsin were intense, but I can tell you it's taken on a new intensity. The players found out that Ohio State beat Michigan. They are like caged lions out here. Erasmus James was screaming at his players for the championship. These guys know what's on the line, and they are intense. All right, Holly, third and 15. You would expect that on both sides. Tate out of the shotgun. Overthrew his receiver, and it's intercepted by Jim Leonard. At the 32-yard line, the Wisconsin Badgers responding on the first series of the ball game. Leonard with his 20th career interception. Jim Leonard, Mark, comes up with his 20th career interception, and I'm a little bit surprised that Iowa didn't run a screen or something a little bit more simple trying to hit the big tight end Chandler down the seam and a great interception by Jimmy Leonard. They're working with a short field at the 32 yard line of Iowa. Jim Leonard telling me before the game that hey we just didn't execute last week against Michigan State. We'll be OK. First down and 10. John Stocko at the helmet quarterback incomplete intended for Brandon Williams. It'll be second down and 10. John Stocko is the starting quarterback, a 6'2", 200-pound sophomore who has grown leaps and bounds. Nothing spectacular or flashy about him, but he has a great economy of motion and extremely efficient. These are the backs and receivers. Bernstein getting a start today at the starting tailback. And you have a 270-pound fullback and a 275-pound tailback. And this offensive line is really talented, Mark, particularly these two offensive guards. Second down and 10 from the Hawkeye 32. It's a toss to Bernstein out of Scarsdale, New York, and he's chopped down at the 31-yard line. Knifing through the offensive line was Javon Johnson. Take a look at the Hawkeye defense. There's the front. Babino, Lupke, Robinson, and Matt Roth, the conference leader with seven sacks, along with James, Greenway, Hodge, and Lewis, the linebackers. 
And this Iowa defense, Mark, as we look at the secondary, has forced 16 turnovers in the last four football games. They are fifth in the nation in turnover margin. There's Matt Roth, one of 15 seniors, playing his final home game. A senior class that has accomplished a lot. Third down and eight. Stocko, and it's incomplete at the 15-yard line, intended for Darren Charles, who's been a key part of a Wisconsin's offense in the last four weeks. And it's fourth down and eight. Mark, you're exactly right. Darren Charles had a chance right there. The football thrown a little wide into the outside. And bottom line, I really think this football game today will come down to these field goal kickers. And Mike Allen is 10 of 17 on the season, but he has missed four of his last six. This one will be coming from 47 yards away. And keep in mind, Iowa blocked two field goals two weeks ago against Purdue. Another miscue. And it's incomplete. The Hawkeyes come up with a big play of their own. It'll be Iowa ball at the 32-yard line when we come back to Kinnick Stadium, a part of the Big Ten title on the line. There's a look at Kenny DeBush, who fumbled that snap on the field goal attempt, Bob. Mark, not much you can say about this. Kenny DeBush, obviously a good snap. And we mentioned this game will probably come down to battles of field goals. And Iowa, in my opinion, has a huge advantage in that category. Kyle Schlicker had five field goals last week in their win against Minnesota. First down and 10. This is Iowa's second possession of the ball game. Play fake by Drew Tate. And he completes the pass at the 38-yard line to Clinton Solomon, who last week had nine catches for 154 yards in that win against the Gophers. And Mark, field goals is a big factor. This is the other big factor, Drew Tate's escape ability and the thing he does as good as any quarterback I've seen. You see there late on that frame, his eyes up looking downfield when he scrambles. He does not scramble to run. He scrambles to throw. And this is, speaking of throwing, an offense for Iowa that has thrown 60% of the time this year. Second down and two. That's a departure from what they usually do. They give it to the fullback, Tom Bush, and he's stopped up immediately by Antaj Hawthorne. Bob, we were watching the tape earlier this week and uh, unused to seeing Wisconsin getting gashed the way they did last week against Michigan State. Well, you're right. I mean, Michigan State did a great job. But forget about Iowa gashing Wisconsin in the run game, Mark. I mean, to put it in perspective, Iowa comes in 115th in rush offense out of 117 teams in NCAA football. So forget about the run game. It's going to be Drew Tate scrambling and creating plays down the field, throwing the football. Third down and three. Tate, the first-year starter, audibling at the line. And they didn't get the playoff in time. Going to be a delay of game penalty against the offense. Drew Tate, a sophomore out of Baytown, Texas, last year actually, while Bay backing up uh, Nathan Chandler, the starter for the Hawkeyes, uh, most of the year. Uh, there were times where the coaches actually thought they might put him in there. Came awfully close to replacing Chandler at times. Played for his father in high school. He's out of Baytown, Texas. Iowa called a timeout. That'll be their first charge timeout. So no penalty, but Iowa does get charged with its timeout, as Mark, they call one. You talk about Drew Tate and his evolution as a quarterback here. You mentioned in high school, uh, he came from Bay, Baytown, Texas. Originally committed to Texas A&M when R.C. Slocum was the head coach. Uh, when R.C. Slocum was let go, he changed his mind and came up here to Iowa. But one thing that hindered his development a little bit was that he was always in the shotgun. Every snap in high school from the ninth grade on. So it sounds funny, but just learning how to play under center, the three-step drop, the five-step drop, because he has always been in the shotgun. 
and here's a look at how mobile and agile he is working on the edges Bob getting out of the pocket uh, this is a part of the offense that they have to rely on you would think today against Wisconsin Mark and I mean it happens each and every week and as you watch him gain confidence he gets better and better at it he really does remind me of kind of a Doug Flutie maybe Jim McMahon kind of a quarterback I mean he is fun to watch I think right now he's the hottest quarterback in the Big Ten Conference one of the most prolific actually the most prolific passer in Texas high school football history rewrote the record books a couple of seasons ago and I'll tell you what Mark with four senior defensive linemen from Wisconsin all four NFL players he will be running for his life today that defensive front for the Badgers a little salty coming in they didn't like some of the comments they heard all week third and three Tate with plenty of time and picked off again. Jim Leonard with his second pitch. And if you don't know, you better ask somebody. Jim Leonard is here. His second interception of the ball game and the 21st of his career. And Mark, that tells you about Jimmy Leonard because last week he had his worst football game, in my opinion, at Wisconsin. He probably missed five tackles in the open field. Right here, he's just sitting in the middle of the field. They run a crossing route and another poor decision by Drew Tate. When you look at Drew Tate, Mark, he actually is better throwing on the run. That time sitting there in the pocket almost gave him too much time. He telegraphed that football. Jim Leonard out of tiny Tony, Wisconsin. You may have heard the story of former walked on. First down and 10 for the offense. This is Bernstein out of Scarsdale, New York. And let's go back to Reese Davis. Uh, Reese, let's put a bow on that Ohio State uh, Michigan game. And Mark Taco Bell will take us to a jubilant horseshoe in Columbus, Ohio. This Jim Tressel's favorite play, victory formation. And the Buckeyes knock off the Wolverines. First Big Ten loss for Michigan, opening the door for Wisconsin, as you guys have said, to go to Pasadena. 37 to 21, the Buckeyes get it done against Michigan. And I've been telling Trev and Mark, why do we want a playoff in college football? <laughs> it proves that every game matters. And how about the electricity? Matt in the Roth amping up the meter a little bit there. It's electric even more so now. Matt Roth with his eighth sack of the season. Mark, Matt Roth, one service has him rated as the 25th best NFL draft pick next year at all positions. This guy is relentless. In some ways, it's Matt Roth and the Iowa defensive line against Erasmus James and the Wisconsin defensive line. This is a personal challenge, <laughs> and that guy looks like they're supposed to look, doesn't it? Yeah, the coaches say affectionately that he has a, a loose wire up there, but they love him for it. Third down and long, 15 to go. Stocco on the run. Completes it to Brandon Williams, far short of the first down at the 34 yard line. That's on the edges of field goal range as it stands right now. And how about this Iowa defense, Mark? Number one in the Big Ten in red zone defense. And this is a mentally tough Iowa football team as we look at Norm Parker. This football team, and particularly Norm Parker, have been through so much. They showed their mental toughness. Two turnovers bouncing back. Well, they had a fumbled snap on the last field goal attempt. This is Mike Allen from 51 yards out. They get it down this time with the wind at his back. He pushes it to the right. The Badgers 0 for 2 in special teams right now, and that one had a chance. An inauspicious beginning for Barry Alvarez in his quest for the Big Ten title. We'll be back. ESPN's College Football Saturday is presented by Crestor. Visit Crestor.com and ask your doctor if Crestor is right for you. And in part by Singular. Text the word player to 64444 to vote for the Singular College Player of the Week. Welcome back, everyone, to a sold-out Kinnick Stadium. These teams have met 80 times previously, but this is the inaugural game for the Heartland Trophy. That's it on the sidelines. And this is Marcus Simmons coming back to action for the first time since spraining an ankle 
against Ohio State. He missed the last four games, and Bob, we have yet to chronicle the story at tailback for Iowa, and what a story it's been. They've lost six players in all this year to knee injuries, three of them to the top three tailbacks. Mark, it is amazing, and Marcus Simmons, you can see, gives them a spark. He's a young man from Davenport, Iowa, as we look at the injuries right there. Marcus Simmons, you mentioned the ankle against Ohio State, but he went to Nebraska out of high school, transferred back here to Iowa. Second down and three after the nice game. That's Hinkle in motion. Here's Simmons. Brought down at the 42, just shy of the 42. About two yards short of the first down. Mark Zalewski making the stop on the play. And, uh, Bob, we were talking about it during the commercial break. Uh, what about this sophomore quarterback, Drew Tate? Maybe his biggest game of his young career. How do you settle him down right now? I'll tell you what. I think you kind of let him go because... You got to take the good with the bad, Mark. He makes a lot of plays outside the system. Sometimes it's going to be good. Sometimes it's going to be bad. So you can't sit on him right now. I mean, let him keep ripping because he is the franchise for Iowa offensively. No question about that. He's thrown two interceptions already. Ed Hinkle goes high to make the catch for the first down at the 46-yard line. He was working on Brett Bell, and you saw the distinct height advantage there as Hinkle went up to make the grab. First down and 10. And I really think, going back to my point earlier, Drew Tate throws better on the run. In some ways, that was a very well-thrown football because it gave Ed Hinkle the chance to go up and make a catch. But he is a scrambling kind of guy. When he sits in that pocket, he may see too many things. First down and 10. Hinkle in motion again on the 12-yard gain. This time he stays in the pocket and completes the pass over the middle to Chandler, the big tight end at 6'7". He was working on Jim Leonard. Scott Chandler, the brother of the former starting quarterback Nathan Chandler last year. Mark, eight-yard gain. I like this guy right here. I mean, he was a wide receiver, a wide receiver in high school. He was a wide receiver here until training camp. They moved him in preseason. I'm talking about Scott Chandler, number 87. He's six foot seven, and he can run. I think he's going to be a star here at Iowa. They said that his wide receiving skills helped him run better patterns as a tight end. Mickens and Bush lining up out of the eye. Solomon in motion. The give is to Mickens, and he's stopped up front by Antaj Hawthorne. Mark, these programs so similar in so many ways, starting with their defensive philosophy. Brent Bielema played at Iowa, Wisconsin's defensive coordinator. He is an, an under 4-3 coach. They play a lot of quarters in the secondary. Really mirror images of Iowa. Wisconsin will play a little bit more as we look at Norm Parker but a lot of quarters or four deep coverage in the secondary, both teams. Brett Bielema with a lot of college buddies here at the game, and his dad, Arnie, unable to make it because of a throat infection. We hope he gets better soon. Third down and one, and they get the first down. Aaron Mickens down to the 30-yard line. They've used a little bit of Brownlee. A little bit of Simmons. Now Mickens in a tailback and a pickup of eight yards to move the chains. And Mickens really the fullback right here. Just kind of finds a crease mark and hits it up in there. And I think a point psychologically, I think it's a little bit easier for Iowa right now. They have not been on that roller coaster of emotions quite like Wisconsin. I mean, Wisconsin, the favorite a week ago, loses to Michigan State, watching that scoreboard with Ohio State today. Iowa's just kind of been plodding along, laying in the weeds. Wisconsin's been on a roller coaster. Their motto has been find a way. Drew Tate looking for a way complete down to the 12-yard line. Once again, it's Scott Chandler for the first down on a pickup of 17. Again right here on the boot, Drew Tate comes out. You see the tight end Chandler against man-to-man -man coverage, a little shake route working on the strong safety Robert Brooks, and what a great matchup. You're talking about Scott Chandler at 6'7". Going against a strong safety. Keep in mind, Scott Chandler was a wide receiver. And keep Drew Tate on the move, Mark. He throws so much better. In the red zone, they're going to run it this time. That's Simmons 
plowing his way between the tackles. Simmons, a pickup of seven on the play, near the five yard line. And this Iowa offense, Bob, seems to have collectively gotten its legs back underneath them on this drive. And Mark, we go back to Holly's report early in the game about Erasmus James reaction to Ohio State winning that football game. I'm telling you sometimes when you get on that emotional roller coaster you don't have much energy left for what's really important and you sense right now don't you the energy clearly on Iowa's side in this football game early. There's over 70,000 people here to serve as witnesses to that. Drew Tate rolling out. Touchdown, Hawkeyes, Solomon. You have to love the resiliency of Drew Tate, Mark. A couple minutes ago, we were talking about the two early game interceptions. Now we're talking about five straight completions. No one's, no one's asking how to get him settled down. Schlicker knocks it through. Drew Tate with a 16 touchdown pass this season. The big wide receiver Clinton Solomon at six foot three in motion against man to man coverage right now the defensive back with inside leverage Mark has no chance in a great little move right here beating Brett Bell into the end zone with all the injuries on the offensive line and down to their fifth string tailback Iowa getting it done by any means necessary. It's only beginning, folks. Tonight, two great rivalry games. BYU against number six Utah at 10 and 0. Hey, Utah, trying to become the first team from outside the BCS conferences to qualify for a BCS bowl game. Then Florida against number eight Florida State at 7:45 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN HD. Ron Zook coaching his final farewell game in that one. Clinton Solomon continuing to emerge as a huge part of this offense and well, peaking I mean, at just the right specifically. time. Specifically, I mean, they dropped the one out. Of the winner of this one gets a share of the Big Ten. If Wisconsin wins, they go to Pasadena outright. Brandon Williams on the return out to the 28 yard line. And let's go back to Reese Davis and find out how the Cadillac's doing with Auburn. Not getting much done against Alabama. Mark Seiko taking us to Bryant-Denny Stadium. This the last play of the first. Wow. Again, Mark. Would have never guessed, huh? Why do we so want far? a playoff? <laughs> Why do we want a playoff? I mean, every game matters. First down and 10. Let's see how Wisconsin's offense responds. Two tight ends and two wideouts. Matt Bernstein is the lone back. And it's Bernstein out to the 30 yard line maybe got two. let's recap for you Anthony Davis the team's leading rusher and best tailback with a quadriceps injury and he has not played so far in the ballgame. There he is on the sidelines had over 100 yards rushing last week we're here at Kinnick Stadium Iowa City Iowa Wisconsin against Iowa which basically boils down to a Big Ten championship game. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey Holly Rowe down to the field. If Iowa wins, they get a share of the Big Ten, a regular season title. If Wisconsin wins, they go to Pasadena. Stocko. Complete at the 35 to Brandon Williams. About three yards short of the first down. Mark, I promise you, Iowa's defense is happy. Number 28 is over there on the sidelines because Iowa really good against the run normally. Last week gave up a 79, a 39, and a 38 yard run up at Minnesota against some quick little backs. So you sense Wisconsin not much speed or big playability in that backfield. Yeah, he's the home run hitter for them. Third down and three. Stocko with time. Oh, what a hit. But they got the first down. Abdul Hodge rocked Brandon Williams' world on the tackle. 
But Williams hung on to make the first down. Mark, we mentioned both these teams so much alike. Both of them play quarters coverage. And what quarters coverage is is four deep in the secondary. So you're not going to have much ability to throw the ball down the field. But where you attack it is on the outside and underneath because you only have three underneath pass droppers. So a lot of these short quarter zones you see right here four deep in the secondary and right there the little underneath route now you pay the price because those linebackers will knock the heck out of you after you catch it first down Bernstein going east and west which isn't his forte brought down at the 36 by Javon Johnson the 5'9 junior Bernstein out of Scarsdale New York uh, He's not a Ferrari. He's a Mack truck. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, Mark. We saw him down on the field before the game without his pads on. I mean, he is all of 270 pounds. And keep in mind, he had over 120 yards rushing against Penn State. But bottom line, not much escapability. Kind of makes him one-dimensional. And that puts all the pressure on John Stocko in this Wisconsin passing game. Second down and 12. It's Bernstein out of the backfield, broke a tackle, and brought down at the 43 by Abdul Hodge, about six yards short of the first down. He picked up six. Bernstein was, like I said, a Mack truck against Penn State. He can be pretty nimble at times, uh, hurdling would-be tacklers right there. Does that count as nimble, Bob? I or think is it, that a stretch? No, that's, that's nimble for a 275-pound guy. But I guess so. We talk about all Iowa's running back injuries. How about Wisconsin? Yeah. They lose Dwayne Smith in training camp. They've had three or four tailbacks injured this year. Third down and six for the Badgers at their own 43-yard line. Stocko has all day. And with all day to throw, he completes the pass to Brandon Williams again at the 43 of Iowa. And Bob, you can't give him that much time to throw the ball. A 14-yard pickup by the Badgers. You're exactly right, Mark, particularly against zone coverage. Here in the end, you're going to see they're going to end up in quarters coverage, four deep. And Stocko just buys time right here. And the square in route comes open. But you're exactly right. I mean, this Iowa defensive line is really a good pass rushing unit. Just way too much time right there for John Stockton. First down and 10. And now we get a, our first look at Booker Stanley at tailback. Number 32 for Wisconsin. Owen Daniels in motion. And it's Booker Stanley cutting back. Stanley a different type of runner, Bob, than Bernstein for obvious reasons. Uh, not quite as explosive as as Davis the home run hitter but still can be pretty good and a good back mark I mean he has a toe injury he's gone a little bit in the doghouse according to the coaches which happens sometimes over a long season there's a lot of ebbs and flows but the last two weeks he's only carried the ball five times in each of the last two weeks so he's kind of fallen out of good graces but he got a chance here today to contribute well the first 15 minutes in Kinnick Stadium are in the books. That's the end of the first quarter of play. And in a game that is this intensely contested, this hotly encested, special teams comes under the microscope even more. Wisconsin has had two miscues on special teams. Iowa with a touchdown pass to Solomon. They have to lead 7-0 when we come back. If Wisconsin wins today against Iowa, they go to Pasadena to play in the Rose Bowl. If Iowa wins, they would earn a share of the Big Ten title along with Michigan. And Mark, that means, though, that Michigan would go to the Rose Bowl because yep. they beat Iowa in head-to-head -head competition. Yep. Lloyd Carr in Michigan, huge Think they're watching right now? Iowa fans right now. <laughs> Second down and nine for the Badgers on offense. They've had the ball in Iowa territory on all three of their possessions. A little motion on the right side of the offensive line for the Badgers. Prior to the snap, false start, number 61, offense. That's a five-yard penalty, remains second down. And Mark, excuse me, how about the effort of Ohio State to be able to knock Michigan off today after really caving in a little bit at the end of the game last week against Purdue? All the off the field distractions, you know, sometimes those things bond you and draw a football team 
and a fan base closer. And you got to give you put your take your hats off to Jim Trussell in Ohio State. That was a great win. Says a lot about his leadership. Second and 14 for Wisconsin. Wisconsin trying to make it to Pasadena with a win here against Iowa. Brandon White, the intended receiver on that pass. And it'll set up a third down and long. Mark the storyline coming into this game. Iowa's offense pretty anemic running the football, half the throw to win. All of a sudden, Wisconsin looks just like Iowa. Yeah. You don't get the feeling that Wisconsin without Anthony Davis can run the ball. Would you rather have Drew Tate or John Stocko? <laughs> right now you're saying Drew Tate. If I was Wisconsin, I'd rather have Anthony Davis healthy in the backfield. That would help. If you're just joining us, Davis has not gotten into the game yet because of a quad injury. Stocko double pumps. And it's incomplete. And he ended up on his back at the 43-yard line as Davis watches from the sidelines. Tyler Lupke in on the pressure for Iowa up front. It's fourth down and long now for the Badgers. And Mark, you see the difference between Drew Tate and John Stocko. John Stocko not nearly as mobile, which means he's not as creative against the rush. He just sat in there that time. So huge advantage right now to Iowa and Drew Tate. Wisconsin into punt now. Back on his own 10. And it's going to be Eddie Hinkle, the junior, finally healthy for the entire season. He's from Erie, Pennsylvania. Hinkle calls for the fair catch at the 15 yard line. There's a little bit of contact down there, but no flag thrown on the 32 yard punt. That draws some booze from the Iowa faithful here. Well, tomorrow night, Sunday night football, Green Bay at 5 and 4, taking on the Houston Texans in 4 and 5. Texans have lost a couple of straight games, and uh, the Packers, meanwhile, heading in the other direction. They've won four in a row. This game also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Coverage beginning with NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite at 7 30 p.m. Eastern Time. And good uh, far completing almost 65 percent of his passes this year first and ten for Drew Tate hands it off to Marcus Simmons from Davenport Iowa as I said earlier he sprained his ankle against the Buckeyes missed the last four games but looked pretty explosive Bob in his couple of carries so far tonight and one reason Iowa continues to win they have not fumbled the football mark in the last three games as we look at Marcus Simmons stats so they really do a good job protecting the football. This is a team that leads the nation Iowa does in turnover margin. But is 115th in the country in rushing yardage. There's a little receiver screen and Solomon trying to make a little magic on the edge out to the 31 yard line brought down by Jim Leonard but not until he picks up uh, 14 yards. Mark, maybe a signature play for Iowa over the years. The jailbreak screen. You see Solomon coming back towards the quarterback. You see the whole offensive line downfield. And number 70 gets an excellent block. Lee Gray out there on the corner. This Solomon's a talented guy now. Nice for him to be back in uniform this year after going to junior college last season. Drew Tate spin cycle. And he's drying out that defense with his moves. I tell you what, I know you love Drew Tate. <laughs> when you break out spin cycle, that means you like the guy. Uh, Doesn't he remind you of Doug Flutie? Sure does. Maybe a little bit taller. They list him at six foot and change. Well, but he's probably closer I to five. I know 11. what they list him, Mark, but <laughs> I'm not sure he is six foot and change. And right here, I mean, he might have spun a little prematurely right there. <laughs> I'm not sure there was any reason to, but he's fun to watch. Second down and ten. Wisconsin's defensive front trying to make an imprint on this game. And this is Simmons with three hard-earned yards out to the 34. And Reese Davis, tell us what's happening with Louisville. Well, Mark Miller's going to take us down to Houston, where the Louisville Cardinals, the nation's top offense, and Stephon LaFors, who's a finalist for the Davey O'Brien Quarterback Award, man, they just have open receivers all the time. This time, it's Adam McCauley cutting through that Cougar defense. Oh, memories of five slamma jamma. Cardinals get the first dunk. 
Third down and seven. Reese back here. Tate running away from James and wisely throws it out of bounds. Rasmus James with the pressure on Drew Tate that time. It'll be fourth down. They'll punt. And I think right here, Mark, you see really the strength of Erasmus James right here as he just keeps bull rushing, keeps working, keeps working. But really a pretty good job of pass protection by Pete McMahon right there, number 69 for Iowa. On fourth down, David Bradley with the punt. And he booms one to Jim Leonard back at the eight. Leonard still on his feet. It's going to be Wisconsin ball at the 23. What a hit. What a punt by Zach Bradley, though, Hampton, Mark. Captain Bob uh, recovered the loose ball. A 56 yard punt. Leonard put it on the ground, but Wisconsin fortunate to get it back. Welcome back, everyone. Time now for the Nivea for Men game track. Jim Leonard from Tony, Wisconsin. At a graduating class of just 250 people, and you can hear all 250 of them cheering after those two picks by Leonard, but then Iowa countering with a Solomon touchdown catch. And that's where we stand right now, seven to nothing. The Badgers with the ball at their own 23-yard line. First down and 10 after that long David Bradley punt. Winner of this game, if it's Wisconsin, will go to the Rose Bowl. If Iowa wins, they would earn a share of the Big Ten title along with Michigan. counter play this is Bernstein broke a couple of tackles and he's brought down across the 25 at the 26 yard line Mark this is one of my favorite guys as you know this left offensive guard from Wisconsin Benning watch him pull right here and get a great kick out block on the little counter play boom right there they do a great job Wisconsin does of getting big linemen that's about 325 pounds on a linebacker Chad Greenway hard-earned yards second down and seven Williams in motion he takes the handoff and he stopped up right near the line of scrimmage by Jonathan Babineau who leads the conference coming into this game and tackles for loss Babineau actually came to Iowa as a fullback and Babado, according to Norm Parker, he is a legitimate NFL prospect at six foot two, about 280 pounds. But Mark, you sense right now Wisconsin a little anemic, trying to find a way to move this football, kind of digging down in the bag of tricks. Third and eight. Stocko completes it out to the 29 yard line to Bernstein but he's far short of the first down and Abdul Hodge lets him know about it and mark against this Iowa defense if you cannot run the ball when you get in third and long you're going to get a bunch of soft quarters coverage they're going to make you throw the ball underneath and it's really tough to convert third and long against a soft zone coverage with a good four man rush. Now Bob Penny to Bush into punt, averaging about 42 per. Hinkle standing at his own 31-yard line. Bush gets off a nice high spiral. Fair catch called at the 27-yard line by Hinkle. A 44-yard punt. Iowa hoping to spoil Wisconsin's dreams of roses. ESPN's College Football Saturday is presented by Pontiac and the first ever G6, the next official performance machine of the NCAA. And in part by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. A cool, breezy day here in Iowa City, Iowa, at the corner of Hawkins and Clark. Wisconsin trailing 7 to nothing with 9.52 to go in the first half. Iowa with possession of the ball at their own 27-yard line. Drew Tate, the quarterback, the first-year starter. Sam Brownlee, the tailback. 
They bring a little bit of heat. And Drew Tate brought down to the 34-yard line. Let's go back to Reese. All right, Mark, and back to Bryant-Denny Stadium. Auburn shut out for the first time since the Georgia game last year in the first half, and Jason Campbell gets the offense going. Oh, that aroma shoe do that you do. Devin Aroma Shudu deep in Alabama territory, and from there, the Cadillac will cruise and show him the ball. I'm going to score. 44th touchdown in his career for Auburn, and the Tigers are on top, 7-6. I tell you, that, that Cadillac got some nice rims. <laughs> the shoe do that you do. I tell you, Reese pulling out all stops here <laughs> late in the season now. And so is Sam Brownlee from Emmitsburg, Iowa. The fifth string tailback moves the chains for the first down at the 40 yard line. Brought down by Erasmus James in on the stop. And Erasmus James, you wonder about the psyche of this defense, okay? Erasmus James, one of those Florida guys from Miami, Pembroke Pines, actually. And he was asked about the Iowa offensive line. He said, hey, they're a solid group, but quote, I don't think they can hang with us. So if you think they're smarting a little bit, or he might be smarting after Michigan State's loss last week, uh, think again. Rotate on the play fake. And he's sacked back at the 33-yard line by Andy Crooks. So the defense starting to bring it a little bit. And, uh, you know, they gave the Offensive Player of the Week award to a Michigan State lineman, Bob. Mark, you just hit the nail on the <laughs> head. And that's what had Erasmus James upset. And we went back and looked at that tape yesterday from the Michigan State game. Michigan State did an unbelievable job, 551 total yards. But they never ran the ball <laughs> to Erasmus James' side. So the good news, the offensive tackle kept Erasmus James from making many plays. But the real story is they ran away from Erasmus <laughs> James the whole day. So I can understand why he was a little upset. Kind of a backhanded compliment in a way. Exactly. There's Aaron Mickens getting a couple on the play out near the 35 yard line. It'll be 15 yards to go for the first down. And Cooper in on the tackle that time for the Badgers. 7.45 to go in the first half. Rasmus James, Antaj Hawthorne, Jason Jefferson, and Jonathan Welsha. Four good seniors up front for that defense for Wisconsin. They've played well all year long, and Bob, it would be a shame if they don't finish the year out on a positive note. Well, Mark, they ought to be licking their chops right now on third down and 15. And I'll tell you what, Iowa does an excellent job on third downs, particularly as Drew Tate can scramble around and find open receiver. He has to do it here, third and 15. And Tate with no magic that time, sacked by Dantez Sanders. And Dantez says it's time to punt. Now Sanders, fifth and a half sack this year. Sometimes you wonder what happens to great defensive ends late in the season. Erasmus James that time, Mark, was double teamed. And you see the speed of Dantez Sanders, who was a wide receiver at one point. Bradley's punt. Jim Leonard back at the 29. Leonard found an alley. Jim Leonard with a great return into Iowa territory at the 43-yard line. Off the 45-yard punt, a 27-yard return. All the Tonys proud of that guy. We'll be back with more after. Welcome back, everyone, to Kinnick Stadium. Tonight, two great rivalry games. BYU against number six, Utah. Utah trying to crash that BCS party. And then it's Florida taking on number eight, Florida State. That's at 7 p.m. on ESPN2 and 7.45 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. You know, so many times, Bob, when a coach is on his way out, you see the players kind of rise up and get very emotionally intense and play one of their best games of the season. You wonder if that's going to happen tonight with Florida. First down and 10 for Wisconsin. Once again, starting this drive inside Iowa territory. Bernstein brought down after a gain of about two yards. You know, this guy was so much bigger than everyone else, Bob as we look at Norm Parker trying to devise a scheme. And Mark, I got to give you a great Norm quote. He said, the best thing you can do as a football coach is forget a big word every day. <laughs> now, let me translate that to you. That means keep it simple. And if you keep it simple, they play fast. And I think that is exactly what he does with this Iowa defense. You know where they're going to line up. 
but those kids are comfortable and they play fast because it's not too complicated. And right now that defense holding Wisconsin to just 41 total yards. Stocko trying to change that. Complete to Williams. Out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Brandon White with a six-yard pickup. And he's about two yards short. Actually, yard short of the first down. Mark, in one way, you beat quarters coverage. I want you to watch. It's a soft four deep zone. Throw the football out in the flat. And you look right here. Watch the corner retreat four deep. Throw the football in the flat outside the linebacker. Kosiak and Pachotti, the two tight ends in on this formation. Bernstein and Stanley, the backs. They had troubles in short yardage situations last week against the Spartans. Bernstein, no problem here. Gets the first down at the 28 yard line. I started to talk about Bernstein from Scarsdale, New York, and you know that they wouldn't, I'm talking about his, his team, they wouldn't even let him touch the ball until his junior high. Lee year because he was so much bigger than everyone else. This is Pop Warner ball I'm talking about. And Bob, they used to put a big X on his helmet <laughs> so that opponents could spot him easily and avoid a collision if they chose to do that. <laughs> that is a great story. First down and 10. Bernstein with a breather. Stanley the lone back. Stocko for Charles. Incomplete at the three. Broken up by Marcus Pascal. Maybe second down and 10. Mark, Marcus Pascal has become an excellent player right here. Again, they're in quarters coverage. You see the corner jump up. The ball is really well thrown right here, but it hangs in the air, Mark, a little too long. And Marcus Pascal made up a lot of ground right there. This is the deepest penetration today for Wisconsin. I was 29 yard line 513 to go in the first half if you're just joining us Ohio State defeated Michigan today so if Wisconsin wins they go to Pasadena to play in the Rose Bowl this is Bernstein stopped up short of the first down Abdul Hodge leading the charge along with Pascal once again this is the Big Ten story up to the minute. Ohio State winning 37 to 21. So Michigan loses its first conference game. I talked about Wisconsin winning. They would go to the Rose Bowl. If Iowa wins, Kirk Ferentz's team would earn a share of the Big Ten title along with Michigan. But Michigan would win the tiebreaker based on the head to head battle. Third down and eight now for the Badgers. Mark, we talk about Wisconsin not being able to run the ball. They've run the ball 11 times today for eight yards, and that's why they're in this third and long situation. And Anthony Davis still pondering perhaps what could have, what might have been from the sidelines for the Badgers. Timeout, Wisconsin. That's their first charge timeout. Barry Alvarez's his team, 9-1, and one, and what a great season it's been, but they're looking for the exclamation point with a victory tonight. Iowa leading 7-0 back at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa. Wisconsin with the ball third down and about eight to go. Mark the tight end number 11, Owen Daniel in the game. Excellent pass receiver. Stocko out of the shotgun. Stocko can take off. And Stocko close to the first down, but I'm not sure that he got there. He may have been stopped a few inches short just inside the 20 yard line. We talk about Tate being able to move and it's going to be fourth down coming up. But John Stocko was actually the runner up in the team slam dunk competition a couple of seasons ago. So he's a pretty good athlete himself. Mark I think if you're Barry Alvarez right here you have to go for this. In my opinion you're struggling in the field goal game. And you have a 275 pound tailback. And last week, last week they had problems with that, Bob. Great point, Mark. Kevin White, the offensive coordinator, said he'd do it the same way again if he had to. And you have to think Bernstein, the fullback, is going to carry this football. He's the first guy in the eye. They give it to Bernstein. He busts one for the first down. I'll tell you what, Mark. Keep this guy in a three-point stance. <laughs> he runs so much more explosive from a three-point stance than he does back there at tailback, in my opinion. 
I'll tell you what, this is 275 pounds. You see why when he was back in Midget Lake? <laughs> They put a big star on his helmet. Is that what you told me? Because yeah. he was too big to carry the ball? Do not touch it. Too big to tackle. He used to have a play at Scarsdale called the Bernstein Sweep. He had his brother on the team, uh, Alex, who was a guard. Ben was a tailback, and he was the lead blocker. And that's Pascal, the player who's shaken up on the field for Iowa. What they don't need is another knee injury. We documented how they've already lost six players for the season because of knee injuries including their top three tailbacks we're going to take a time out with 328 to go in the first half Iowa leading seven nothing first down and ten for Wisconsin they trail right now seven and nothing with 328 to go in the first half Badgers with their deepest penetration of the game Bernstein and Stanley working out of the eye Brandon Williams split to the top of your screen. It's a two tight end formation for Wisconsin. Bernstein with the catch. Brought down to the five yard line. So Bernstein doing it running and receiving out of the backfield. Mark I'd like to make this point about Anthony Davis. We see Bernstein off the power. Ex an excellent receiver as well out of the backfield. That's a heck of a catch for a guy 275 pounds. What you didn't tell in that story, he wasn't allowed to run the football in Midget League, but maybe they used him a wide receiver back there, Mark. Get out there and show a little agility. They've oiled him up today. This is the ninth play of the Wisconsin drive. It's Bernstein time. And he stopped up at the line of scrimmage two yards short of the first down. Mark, I'd like to make this point about Anthony Davis. You know, when you have a great tailback with high expectations like Anthony Davis, who's been really hurt the last two years, you get the double whammy if you're Wisconsin because obviously you've built your scheme around him. He can't play. But think about this. In recruiting, because you have Anthony Davis back for two more years, you really can't recruit a star tailback. So not only do you lose your top guy for two years, you can't recruit either. Yeah. And no one's more disappointed about it than Anthony Davis. He's a tough kid, but he's had some tough luck. A crucial third down and two. Booker Stanley, his understudy. Touchdown, Badgers! Stanley with his second rushing touchdown this season and the seventh of his career and Wisconsin a point away from tying this one up. You're going to see right here Mark the outside power play Bernstein leading up through their great block right there on the corner. And Booker Stanley gets it in the end zone. 151 to go in the half. Booker Stanley. Bob, you chronicled his misgivings with the coaching staff. But atoning right there, Booker Stanley with a nice burst off the edge. Good blocking up front. We're going to see Bernstein right here on the corner. Joe Von Johnson, number 26. And Booker Stanley, Mark may have a chance to finish this season on a big positive here. Yeah, Reese, uh, Booker Stanley going from the doghouse to the house. Back to you. <laughs> All right, Mark, coming up on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report, Trev and Mark will join me. It is rivalry weekend. We saw the Sooners and the Canes roll. We'll also hear from Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreit to get ready for Utah and BYU. Hey, guys, Auburn struggling. Oklahoma won comfortably. Mark and I still have Auburn ranked ahead of Oklahoma. We just want to know this, Bob Davey. Who do you rank number two? Is it Auburn? <laughs> is it Oklahoma? All right, Bob, putting you on the spot now. What do you think? Here well, you go. You get a chance to make your rankings Bristol. now, Cat. Right here we go, well, Bob. I'm You're the man. To, Let's go. I'm coming up to Bristol on Tuesday. I've got a plan for you if, in fact, Oklahoma and Auburn are still undefeated. I got a plan to work this thing out, but you're going to have to wait till Tuesday for me to get up there. Is it Oklahoma or is it Auburn? I'm not giving you my plan. I said I'm waiting till Tuesday. Thought when I could I'm get in the studio you. with Reese, I'm going to unveil my plan. <laughs> is that Otherwise, called how you tease something in yeah, this industry where you tease? Very savvy, Bob. Out? Very savvy. <laughs> Jason Campbell trying to get his uh, Auburn Tigers team on track right now. And uh, the Wisconsin offense showing signs of life on that last drive.
Nice return coming out by Damian Sims. All the way out to the 40 yard line. A 37 yard return. Been a while since that Iowa offense has been on the field. 143 to go in the first half. Mark again the kicking game we said early I think Iowa has a big advantage in the overall kicking game kind of takes the momentum away from this Wisconsin team that big return right there by Damian Sims Drew Tate working out of the shotgun incomplete intended to his fullback Aaron Mickens that stops the clock with 139 to go in the first half you know we talked about Drew Tate a little bit and uh, how he sat behind Chandler last year interesting that he and Chris Leak actually had their visit to Iowa on the same day and uh, a couple of years ago uh, Tate kind of a simple guy in a flattering way uh, wore his letterman jacket a plain white t-shirt at the end of his visit just turned to the coach and said I just want to know where Chris Leak is going exactly Leak ended up going to Florida of course and Tate signed on here and Tate trying to put more points on the board incomplete at the 35 intended for Chandler but there's a flag down on the play. Mark, we're going to have an offsides on Erasmus James right here. Offside, number 90, defense. Five yard penalty, repeat, second down. Right here, you're going to see at the top of the screen, Erasmus James jumps the gun right there a little bit. Mark, getting back to that Drew Tate story, the other part of that story Kirk Ferentz told us when he took that Letterman jacket off, said he showed that 155-pound <laughs> body with not much muscle, and they were a little bit concerned, but he's gotten a lot stronger the last couple of years. Yeah, they chained him to the bench press machine. This is Hinkle, the wiry Hinkle as well, out near midfield at the 50. Crooks making the tackle on the play. And that is near a first down for Iowa. Rasmus James on the sidelines Jamal Cooper number five an excellent pass rusher in the game to replace him third down and short Tate in trouble looking downfield Solomon touchdown It's Doug Flutie. <laughs> Jamal Cooper had him in the backfield. And again, he doesn't take off scrambling to run. He scrambles to throw. And it's impossible to stay in zone coverage that long. Iowa with a minute to go in the first half. Taking the momentum right back away from the Badgers who scored a touchdown on their last drive. Clinton Solomon making the reception his second touchdown catch of the game this one 51 yards long mark the first thing I want you to watch right here at the top you're going to see the defensive end beat McMichael inside right here Cooper great spin move again and how about that throw going to his left the strength of his arm and I'm going to give Mark May back in the studio one to chew on right here for halftime. Go ahead. In about 1980, when I was coaching at Pittsburgh and Mark May was playing at Pittsburgh, we went up to Boston College. And I think it was the first game that Doug Flutie really started as a quarterback, and he put on a show up there. We had the number one defensive team in the country, and they shredded us. We ended up winning the football game, but Mark May does that not remind you of a young Doug Flutie? This is really uh, looking like it could turn into a huge coming out party. Even more than the previous games that he's had so far this year for Drew Tate. Pick will go into the end zone. The Bachelors will start off on their own 20 yard line. Well, Monday night at 730, join Stuart Scott and company for Monday Night Countdown. It's the comprehensive analysis, interviews, highlights, up to the mid NFL news, and live reports from Kansas City. Then at 9 Eastern on ABC's Monday Night Football, Tom Brady leads the Super Bowl champs against Trent Green and the Chiefs. Monday Night Football on ABC.
Had a flag on the play. After the kick was over, personal foul, late hit, number 51 of the kicking team. That 15-yard penalty will be administered from the 20-yard line, first and 10. Gonna move Wisconsin a little bit closer to potential field goal range. With one minute to go, they've already had some problems in their place kicking game tonight with a fumbled snap and a missed field goal. Got to move it about 40 yards to get into range. Wisconsin with two timeouts left in the half. Keep in mind, they do get the football to start the second half, but I think you got to go ahead and throw it with your Barry Alvarez. Stocko working out of the shotgun. Underneath to Booker Stanley. Stanley brought down to the 40-yard line, five yards short of the first down with 50 seconds to go in the half. Stanley scoring the touchdown on Wisconsin's last drive, their only touchdown of the game. Meanwhile, for Iowa, Solomon has both touchdown receptions. Stocko out of the shotgun once more. Incomplete. And Booker Stanley... <laughs> He knew what was coming the other way. Mark, no question. Got some alligator arms. Well, coming up at the half on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. Guys will be talking about rivalry weekend. Oklahoma and Miami both roll today, and uh, that will uh, fuel the fire on to, as to who should be number two in the BCS standings, Oklahoma or Auburn. And uh, Bob Davey refusing to divulge his number two pick. <laughs> yeah, that's good, Mark. Third down and five. Stocko's going to take off, and he's brought down to the 46-yard line, but he got the first down for Wisconsin, so they'll stop the clock while they move the chains with 24 seconds to go. Mark, again, great pass protection by Wisconsin. You know, Wisconsin's only given up 11 quarterback sacks all year. And the Badgers will call a timeout. They have one remaining. And, Mark, think about this. As a former coach, you think about these things. Think about Lloyd Carr and Michigan on that bus ride from Ann Arbor down to Columbus. How positive it was, the Rose Bowl in their grasp. Think about that bus ride home from Columbus. Right. Now you do not control your own destiny, and you are a huge Iowa fan. And who can't be an Iowa fan if you watch the work of this man, Kirk Ferentz, the head coach, now in his sixth year? Started off one and ten his first year, then three and nine, then the seven and five. They got over the hump a little bit. Then eleven and two in 2002. They go to the Orange Bowl, and then ten and three a season ago. Bob, he told us last season at ten and three that he thought they overachieved. So what do you call this year when they go what five tailbacks deep, all the injuries on the offensive line? It's no wonder that his name constantly pops up when NFL openings come up. Mark, I'll tell you what, if you have to cast a vote for coach of the year right now in college football, I don't know that that's possible. And they think, they talk about Auburn or Oklahoma controversy. How about who's the coach of the year, including this guy right here, Barry Alvarez. Right. Look at all the injuries they've had as a football team. Barry Alvarez's team with a win tonight would go to Pasadena and play in the Rose Bowl. Right now, they have a daunting challenge ahead. Stocko fires incomplete in the general direction of Brandon Williams. It'll be second down and 10. Matt Roth in on the pressure, one of the leading sack men in the Big Ten Conference and a former high school wrestling champ. And right there, he was a linebacker in high school. Great speed rush, Mark. And Norm Parkler simply says he is the toughest guy I have ever coached. The other thing he said, he said, this would be a great next door neighbor. <laughs> In other words, he said he is a great guy that you just enjoy being around. Second down and 10. Roth in on the pressure again. Stocko poised, firing a frozen rope that melts in the arms of Brandon White, complete at the 40 yard line. With just 13 seconds to go now in the first half, a 14-yard pickup. Mark, again, quarters, coverage, very safe deep, but a void on the deep 
out route. Watch right here. The linebacker is going to try to get underneath that. You see right there, that is the weakness of that zone coverage. But it takes a strong arm quarterback and a patient quarterback to attack that football out in the flat. Mike Roth, uh, Matt Roth almost getting the sack that time. And time now for our Applebee's hometown heroes. And uh, they are. Barry Alvarez and Kirk Ferentz, the respective head coaches who not that long ago, Bob, were on the same staff here at Iowa working for head coach Hayden Fry. There's a look at, uh, ooh, how far back are we going, 86? I'll tell you what, that is a heck of a coaching staff right there. I think Hayden Fry won something like 12 or 13 straight against Wisconsin at one point while he was here at Iowa. There's Bill Snyder up in the uh, top row in the back left a pretty good staff as you mentioned and also Dan McCarney right here the head coach at uh, Iowa State a couple of the top coaches in the country right there Barry Alvarez on the left and Kirk Ferentz on the right and Barry Alvarez uh, also the athletic director this year at Wisconsin Mark go back to that penalty on the kickoff by Iowa the 15 yard unnecessary roughness penalty when the ball was kicked a non returnable kick that may end up being a huge penalty here before this half ends. Fans here bringing the noise on first and ten. Maybe a couple of plays and then a field goal attempt. Stocko wisely throws it away. That would have taken them out of field goal range if he had been sacked back there. Good pressure on the defensive front by Derek Robinson. One of 15 seniors making their final home appearance on senior day. And Mark, this Wisconsin defensive line gets a lot of publicity, but how about this Iowa defensive line? They have four seniors as well, and Derek Robinson with seven and a half sacks. This guy's 6'5", 275 pounds, so they actually have three of their four senior linemen or NFL prospects as well. Both teams with a timeout remaining. Stocko. Like they're going to throw it up into the end zone. Almost caught, but incomplete. Jonathan Orr was there. Darren Charles was there. But Stocko couldn't make the connection. The first 30 minutes in the books. 30 minutes to go to see who wins the Big Ten title. Will Wisconsin get to the Rose Bowl on their own? Mark and Jonathan Orr had an opportunity there at the end of the half to tie this football game. Jonathan Orr uh, looking to make the big play. It's been a frustrating season for them. And let's go downstairs to Holly. Coach, what did you and your players know about the Ohio State Mich Michigan results before the game? Oh, absolutely nothing. Only aim is for paying attention. Oh, you know, they announced it was kind of hard to ignore that. But uh, it's really, it has no bearing on this game. We're trying to win a football game. How does it change, though, that you're now playing for a piece of the championship? Doesn't change the thing. We, our whole objective today was to win our ninth game, seventh game in the conference. That's all we're worried about right now. We got our hands full. All right, thanks, We're Kirk. looking forward to it, though. Happy to embrace the challenge. Find a way. That has been their motto and credo all year long. 14-7 at the break. Now let's join Reese in Tallahassee. Reese. But they try to grab a share of the Big Ten. Wisconsin trying to make it to the Rose Bowl. And the Seminoles are in the house. Chris Rick, the final home game. We don't know if he'll get in. Wyatt Sexton is going to start at quarterback. And the Zucker, his final regular season game at Florida. He'll try to win here in Doe Campbell Stadium. Something that Steve Spurrier was never able to accomplish. 1986, last time the Seminoles took the field here in Tallahassee against the Gators and did not emerge victorious. Glad to have you with us in Pontiac High performance halftime report Trev Alberts Mark May alongside and guys Iowa just getting it done again with little Fran Tarkenton you like to call it it's amazing how they're able to do it and this is a total team effort by this football team the way that they can control the offense not putting up a lot of points on the board but they score with Drew Tate no running game whatsoever they rely on their special teams and their defense Trev. and how about this Iowa defense with Norm Parker the defensive coordinator Matt Roth the defensive end another terrific job by him stopping or at least slowing the Wisconsin run and once again guys it comes down to this Wisconsin offense and John Stockel having to throw the 
ball down the field. Iowa playing very well up front on both sides of the ball. Well, the stakes are already high coming into this game, as Kirk Ferentz talked about, just trying to win their ninth and their seventh in the conference. But they bumped up a little bit more after what happened in the old horseshoe this afternoon. Ohio State came in stumbling under siege from the Maurice Claret allegations. Dustin Fox, a part of a 2001 team, 6-4, and four, which knocked Michigan out of a BCS bid, set a sort of a race, the bad taste from their mouths, and it didn't take long for Troy Smith to get busy fighting the freshman Anthony Gonzalez for 68 yards. Great job by Troy Smith of finding time in the pocket until he could get the ball to Gonzalez. 68 yards for the touchdown. And how many times have we seen Michigan Steve Preston break open a game? How about Ted Ginn Jr.? Let me tell you, this freshman's got some wheels. Now, he doesn't have wheels quite like that, but they were pretty good anyway. 82 yards, Ohio State took a 27-14 lead, and the Buckeyes do it to the Wolverines, 37 to 21. And Troy Smith doing it on the ground as well in the air. Terrific day for Troy Smith. 383 yards of offense, and we continue. It is rivalry weekend. Alabama started strong against Auburn. We'll show you how the Tigers are now flexing their muscles against the Crimson Tide. And how about the big game? The Buddy Tevens hanging in there against Cal. Welcome to the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. The winner gets a share of the Big Ten. If it's Wisconsin, they'll go to Pasadena in the Rose Bowl. If it's Iowa, they've got some bragging rights, and Michigan will go to Pasadena. Hawkeyes on top at home, 14-7 to at the break. Oklahoma clinging, clinging to the number two spot in the polls over Auburn. On the road against Baylor, Stoops and the Sooners unbeaten, and Adrian Peterson really took over this game in the second half. We certainly did, guys. Right up the middle there, that's an easy touchdown. But here in the fourth quarter, once again, Adrian Peterson marked the story of the game. 140 yards rush. Broad shoulders for that young man. He is carrying this football team offensively. Without him, they would not be undefeated at this point. Absolutely. They've gone back and forth. Jason Wine on a couple of road games. Peterson doing it in this one. 35 nothing. The Sooners do it with some second half style. Auburn on the road at Alabama. The Iron Bowl annual feud. Crimson Tide trying to spoil. And Courtney Taylor has had such a great season for the Tigers, hauling it in. And Auburn starting to take control. They're on the move again against Alabama in the fourth quarter, 14 to 6. Auburn trying to finish a perfect regular season. Auburn's going to play Tennessee in the SEC championship game. The Vols got more of a scare than they anticipated from Vanderbilt, 38 to 33. Tennessee has now officially and mathematically quenched the SEC East. Big game, Stanford and Cal, the Cal band, Cal band, no Stanford band on the field, not yet anyway, but anything can happen. Aaron Rodgers, Robert Jordan, Cal on top, seven to nothing. And now J.J. Arrington. With this run, he would pass Chuck Muncy. If pass him on the single season rushing record, Muncy had 1460. His moment, Arrington getting close to 1,500 yards. Cal had a 10-3 lead at the half. And Buddy Stevenson, which had so many heartbreaking losses, four of the six losses by five points or fewer. They're about halfway through the third right now. They're standing in there with the Golden Bears. 13-3 is the score, getting pretty deep in the third quarter. A lot of huge plays and huge performances on this day. Think you've seen the greatest plays? We'll show them all to you on College Game Day Final. The Pontiac Game Changing Performance nominees You'll be able to log on and cast your vote and see the winners on Thursday night. It's all in College Game Day Final, midnight hour on ESPN. The Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report is powered by Pontiac and the first ever G6, the next official performance machine of the NCAA. Back on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report, the Gators and the Seminoles getting loose in the early going here, getting set for Florida and Florida State. That'll be our primetime game on ESPN at 7.45 Eastern Time. Well, another ACC-SEC battle, and I used that term literally earlier in the day. South Carolina and Clemson, Lou Holtz decided he's going to retire at the end of the season. And this is an embarrassment the way he would end up going out. This is Reggie Merriweather going into the end zone, third touchdown of the day. Clemson missed the PAT to make it 20-7. It's 29-7 when things would get a little ugly on this fourth and 11 play here as the Gamecocks were trying to get back in it here. You see, everything seems okay, but all of a sudden there's a skirmish there. And this thing would go on for quite some time. Holtz out there, Tommy Bowden was out there trying to break things up, and law enforcement officials, this is inexcusable. Charles Silas, number 97, they're charging. Punches were thrown. People would get ejected. You know what? 
for all that Lou Holtz has meant to college football. It's an absolute disgrace. But he has for him to, to, walk be, off he has like to that. be involved in something like that. And I'm not placing all the blame, by the way, on the South Carolina players. Both teams equally at fault. Absolute disgraceful display by South Carolina and Clemson Mark. You see Penn State and Michigan State, 37 to 13. Michigan State, now the last seven times they beat the top 10 team, they come back and lose, and they got throttled by Joe Paterno's team, 37-13 in Happy Valley. All right, don't forget, tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN2, it'll be BYU and Utah. The Utes trying to finish out their perfect regular season by going 11-0 and beating their arch rival, and they hope, they hope, sewing up a spot in a BCS bowl game. Kirk Herbstreit, ready for the action in Salt Lake City. Well, Reese, this is going to be uh, an exciting game coming up later tonight. But uh, first, a couple of the games from this afternoon. Lee, I know the South Carolina Clemson yeah. game to you stood out not only because it was Lou Holtz's last game, yeah. but what went on during the game. Well, first of all, it had to be so difficult for Lou Holtz to end his regular season coaching career with a loss to Clemson, one of his arch rivals. And then the fact that the fight got ended and just almost maybe Lou was glad it's over with. You know, I was just wondering, watching that, if those Clemson and South Carolina players saw that NBA fight last night and figured it himself, you know, if those those pros can do it why can't we and an interesting thought also came to me I wonder if the old ball coach Steve Spurrier was watching that game and said that's going to be my team the way they play and the way they fight uh-uh nah, not not no not no good. not, not good. good and, and a real quick about Ohio State Ohio State stepped up today showed a lot of heart and character played outstanding played with a lot of motion at home and Troy Smith and Teddy Ginn by the way from the same high school stepped up and played mm -hmm. an incredible way to give uh, Jim Trestle some life this game tonight is as big as it gets today Utah has a chance especially now with Michigan losing mm -hmm. a win it's a lock they're into the BCS a lot of focus is not only going to be on Utah but on their quarterback Alex Smith Alex Smith has to perform very well a lot of pressure on him we talked about it this morning on game day Utah has everything to lose and BYU has yeah. nothing to lose it's gonna allow BYU BYU to come into this game take some chances and really attack Alex Smith with a pretty good defense at 335 defense you know that's a perfect example of what I was gonna talk about BYU's in a situation like Ohio State was against Michigan what do you got to lose let it go they got a quarterback named John Beck who can throw it and Curtis Brown that can run it if I was BYU I'd look at that situation in Ohio State and I'd say let's go we get, if they could beat Michigan <laughs> we can beat Utah any day of the week. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be fun. Reese, it'll be a lot of fun coming up on ESPN2 later tonight at 7 o'clock. All right, Kirk, we're looking forward to it. The nation's longest winning streak alive and well as Boise is hammering Louisiana Tech, getting deep in the fourth quarter in that one. 48-14, it'll be at 21. Will that winning streak? And Louisville on top of Houston, 28-10. Still plenty of time to go in that game as those two teams last year ran up and down the field of 66 45 to finish there. Not going to get 66 45 between Wisconsin and Iowa. They are battling Booker Stanley books one. Badgers trying to earn their way to the Rose Bowl. Performance halftime report is powered by Pontiac. Vote for this week's Pontiac game changing performance at ESPN.com slash Pontiac. All right, Drew Tate has Iowa in position improbably to grab a share of the Big Ten title if they can hang on against Wisconsin in 14 seconds. Don't forget every week to cast your vote for the singular All-America Player of the Week. You can see the nominees on the 1 a.m. Eastern edition of Sports Center tonight. It's easy. All you have to do is text the word player to 64444 on your phone, access the nominees, and cast your vote. Now back to Wisconsin, Iowa, and Mark Jones. All right, Reese, we're under the lights here at Kinnick Stadium. Sold out for this game between Iowa and Wisconsin. Wisconsin down by a touchdown, but they will receive the opening kick here in the second half of play. The Badgers are a team that have endured a lot of adversity throughout the course of the season, and they have had their share of comebacks. Do they have one more left in them tonight? At the three-yard line, it's Williams. And Williams brings it out to the 20, and time now for the... Nivea for men game track. Heartland Trophy at stake for the first time ever in this hotly contested series. John Stocko handing it off to Booker Stanley for the touchdown. Their only one of the game, and then Drew Tate with great escapability to Clinton Solomon downfield, 51 yards for the score. 
That was the go-ahead touchdown for Iowa. Right now, though, first down and 10 for the Badgers at their own 20. Williams in motion. Charles going to make the catch at the 24-yard line. Time now for the Pontiac first half statistics. And neither team, Bob, really tearing it up offensively. No, the type of game you thought it would no, be. No, exactly. It's going to be a defensive game. Something jumps out. Iowa with the two early turnovers. In fact, Drew Tate, two interceptions out of his first three shots three throws but Wisconsin unable to score Wisconsin had the ball and I was 32 and 35 yard line first two possessions of the game and no points second down and six for the Badgers this is Bernstein Bernstein out near the 25 yard line and it'll be third down and about four and a half to go for Wisconsin Let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Guys, I caught up with Barry Alvarez at halftime, and he says his team is well aware that they're playing for a championship. He said that's all he could say. This is for the championship. He said their biggest struggle, though, is their inability to run the ball. I asked him if Anthony Davis could be an option here in the second half. He said not at all. He just doesn't have any strength to push off in that leg. We will not see Anthony Davis here, something that could help this offense for Wisconsin. Yeah, it certainly would, Holly. Third down and four now. Williams in motion. Stocko over the middle. Owen Daniel had it knocked out of his arms, and it's three and out on their first series of the third quarter. Abdul Hodge with a round of applause. And Mark for Wisconsin to win this football game. Keep in mind, Iowa has won 17 straight here in Kinnick Stadium. Excellent play right there by the linebacker, Abdul Hodge. The Bush now with his third punt of the night. Ed Hinkle standing on his own 35. A low line drive punt. And Iowa is going to start off at their own 46 yard line. Very good starting field position on just that uh, 24 yard effort by DeBush. Bob, we've seen Wisconsin come back several times, but the turning point for them really when they made that comeback in the desert against Arizona, you wonder if there's one more left in them tonight. Mark, I think there is, but the bottom line in this game, it's these two defensive lines against each other, and then it becomes which quarterback can make a play outside the system because you're going to have to scramble because both these defensive lines are dominating this game. Simmons, who's playing for the first time in five games with a nice burst over midfield. Let's take a look at the updated Big Ten standings with the loss in Columbus. Michigan falling to 7-1, and 9-2 and two on the year. And I got to ask you again, Mark, who's more disappointed right now, Lloyd Carr or Maurice Claret? I might say it's a tie. No, you don't have to answer. <laughs> I know I'm pushing on this. Kind of rhetorical. The flip side, the positive. What a great win for Jim Trestle in Ohio State. Tinkle was in motion. Here's Tate. Got a lot of pressure and wisely threw it away. It'll be third down and about five to go. Good pressure by Andy Crooks, one of the linebackers starting tonight for Wisconsin. And those Wisconsin linebackers, Bob, last week were a little bit exposed against Michigan State. What do you think about their performance tonight? Well, I think they've played well, but it's a completely different football game. The only problem they have had, staying in coverage when Drew Tate, the quarterback from Iowa, scrambles. They lose their integrity on defense. They give up some zones, but that's difficult when you have a mobile quarterback back there. See if we hear from Erasmus James in on this play. He's double teamed Tate. Incomplete, but there's flags down at the 45 yard line. It was intended for Clinton Solomon. And it's going to be a hold against the offense, Bob. That might have been against uh, the aforementioned uh, Rasmus James. Good way to stop him. Mark, you're right. He not only got double teamed, he got held. Holding number 81 of the offense. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. Right here, we're going to see it. You're going to see the tight end in motion right here. They're going to keep him in. No question about that call. He flat got tackled. And Mark, you get the feeling Jim Leonard back here on this punt return situation has an opportunity to make a play. He had one for almost 30 yards earlier in the first half. 
Leonard calls for the fair catch of the 15 yard line. A 35 yard punt, nothing on the return. We'll be back with more right after this. For eight Florida State against Florida on ESPN, that's at 7:45 Eastern Time. You get about 12 wings, huh? I'll tell you. Well done. Where'd you tell me you're going to get those wings? <laughs> <laughs> Vitos and then Buffalo Wild Wings. You have something going I don't know about. I love the pet promotion ball. standpoint. It's all about Iowa City. And a great atmosphere here tonight under the lights. First down and 10. Booker Stanley on the toss. Out to the 18 yard line. Mark, let's talk about this Iowa defense. They are sixth in the nation in rushing defense out of 117 teams. Total defense, they're 13th. Pass efficiency, 23rd. No real weakness. You get the feeling that Booker Stanley needs to be a factor here, get some kind of running game going so all the pressure isn't on John Stocko, but it's not going to be easy because this is a good, solid defense. You know what you're getting with Norm Parker as a defensive coordinator. Second down and seven. Stocko trying to make a play on his own, brought down from behind at the 20 yard line. It'll be third down and about five to go for Wisconsin. We talked about some of the problems and some of the adversity they've overcome. You know, the turning point for Wisconsin this year might have been in Arizona. They went out there, they were playing in intense heat, turned out to be a lightning and thunderstorm. The game was delayed 45 minutes, their locker room was flooded. They were down in the fourth quarter, made a couple of big plays, went on to win that game, ugly, but it gave them confidence the rest of the way. Third down and five. Jonathan Orr split to the top of your screen. He's been relatively silent so far. Underneath intended for Williams, incomplete. Chad Greenway, number 18, right there along with Abdul Hodge. And it figures those two are inseparable as teammates and friends. And Mark, we talk about keeping it simple. Norm Parker and Iowa do not play a lot of nickel coverages. They keep the linebackers in the game at all times. Just simple zone drop, break on the football, and boom. Abdul Hodge. But there's no nickel five or six defensive backs in there. Those linebackers are excellent in pattern read. The Bush, they came after him, and there's going to be a flag. They roughed the punter. Sean Considine came hard. Hinkle on the return down to the 49. On a 36 yard punt, eight yards on the return, but it was number 37, Sean Considine, who's already blocked a couple of punts in his career. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, number 37 of the receiving team. That's a 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. Mark, Iowa has four block kicks on a season. Here comes Considine clean. Good call. Good call. No question right there that that is a 15 yard penalty and a first down. Wisconsin maintaining possession. Relatively well played game in the penalty department, Bob. Just five between the two teams. You see Kirk Ferentz taking notes. That's where you put an asterisk beside that one right there, Mark, because Iowa would have great field position. Let's see what Wisconsin and John Stocko can do with this. First down and 10. The pass complete near midfield at the 48 yard line. That's Brandon White and Bob goes back to your football 101. That's the soft part of that quarters defense you talk about. No question Mark if you can throw that ball deep into the outside right again it's quarters coverage relatively safe. But it's tough to defend the out because the linebacker has to defend that. You see the linebacker right there on the hash mark? That's an open void. Your, your football 101 is addictive. I got to get off that. I'm starting to sound like you. <laughs> Quarters coverage, man under, all that kind of stuff. Don't get too carried away okay. with yourself. Right <laughs> 13 yard pickup. Inside handoff. Booker Stanley stopped up immediately by Matt Roth. Talked about his toughness, Bob. He's a former high school wrestler. Hadn't wrestled his entire high school career up until his senior year. Tried it out his senior year. Ended up winning the state championship. And Mark, 
Norm Parker said you will always remember number 31 because he does it every day in practice. Right there, he closes. Obviously, Wisconsin could come out with the quarterback keep off of that and take advantage of his aggressiveness chasing the running back there. Second down and 13. Big pressure by the Hawkeyes. Pass incomplete. Now third down and long. Greenway coming on the play. And one of the few times you'll see Iowa blitz. That time Wisconsin unable to sight adjust or have a plan. Right here they bring the linebacker Greenway right up the middle. Roth loses contain a little bit, but you see Wisconsin, Mark, had a zone route called unable to adjust. Third down and 13 now. And so many great stories on that Iowa defense. Those are the ball resting at the 45 for Wisconsin. Mark, you just about count on a four-man rush and quarters coverage behind it. See if Wisconsin's good enough to beat it. Stocko picked off at the 42-yard line, Javon Johnson. And a late flag. We're going to have a personal foul against somebody. Javon Johnson with his third pick of the season and once again an asterisk because Iowa leads actually leads the Big Ten in turnover margin fifth in the nation and Antoine Allen with another big play in consecutive weeks an interception mark that is now 17 turnovers for this Iowa defense in the last five games. Last week against Minnesota, they had three picks. Looks like they got another one here. And the amazing part of that play, Mark, as the officials sort this out, John Stocko had the screen called. It was covered, and he panicked. There are two fouls on the play. Dead ball, personal foul, number 98 of the defense. Dead ball, personal foul, number 53 of the offense. Both penalties will automatically offset the result of play. Iowa, first down. Mark and John Stocko panic. The thing is going to be a little screen pass right here to the running back. And watch Iowa has it defended. And then John Stocko wants to make a play. The running back steps up right there. The screen is covered. He tries to throw back across his body. And a huge mistake right there by John Stockton. 15th pick of the season. Here's the jailbreak screen to Ed Hinkle. And Hinkle makes it down inside the 35 to the 33 yard line. And into Ed Hinkle yesterday at the football offices as we're looking forward to this game. And just happy to be healthy for the whole season. Mark, again, we see the interception right here. They're trying to set up the screen. The screen is covered by Greenway. Throw the ball back across the grain. Again, though, Mark, another third and long situation for Wisconsin's offense because they cannot run the ball. And here's Brownlee. Brownlee got the first down at the 29-yard line. I always want to adjust the hue and the tint on my TV when I watch them play at home. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it keeps you talking about it, though, doesn't yeah. it? That's a great marketing ploy right there. First down and 10. Tony Jackson in motion for Iowa. They're going to whistle this one dead. We've got a flag down on the field. Yeah, we've seen Matt Roth make some plays, and we know about his intensity. As for Drew Tate. Prior to the snap, delay of game, number five, offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And one of the Iowa players was telling me about the toughness of Drew Tate, That telling me that he actually took on Matt Roth in a little squabble they had a little uh, little fight a little to do in practice uh, a while back I promise those offensive coaches broke that one up in a hurry and if those players That's pretty were brave smart, though Bob his teammates if they were smart they'd break that one up in a hurry. Yeah. you call that smart if you call that not real intelligence it's, it's, math rough, it's, it's about like, discretion down. first down in 15 they're on the same team and it comes back to the Badgers picked off Brett Bell Going to be marked down at the one yard line. Tate looked for the strike. 
And that's Bell's third interception of the season. And Wisconsin snatching back some of the momentum they lost a few moments ago. Mark Drew Tate was hit with his third interception of the day. We're going to look on the top right here, the post route. And I'm not sure that Solomon shouldn't have broke that football inside or broke that route inside, Mark. I think Drew Tate was anticipating Solomon to run more to the middle of the football field. That's why that football looked like it was hung up there. You see them talking there on the sidelines. I think that's exactly what Drew Tate is telling him. Snap that thing off at a sharper angle. The opportunity falls by the wayside for Solomon and Iowa's offense. And the fans here really pumping up the volume. They are amped. They are geek. A win for Iowa today, and they earn a share of the conference title with Michigan. Michigan losing earlier in the day at Ohio State. First down and 10 for Wisconsin. Stanley out to the four-yard line. Wisconsin with a win tonight. Would go to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Let's go down to Holly. Well, guys, after that last interception when Ohio got the, or Iowa got the ball back, Wisconsin's defense took the field and started raising their arms to the crowd like pump it up to the opposing crowd. I couldn't understand what they were doing. Then you could hear them yelling, we're going to get it back. They were trying to pump up the team in their favor. And sure enough, they got the ball back, guys. The defense took the challenge, and they accepted it. Well, Holly, they've uh, hung their head on defense all season. It came through for them once again, second and seven. Stocko passing out of the end zone. Threw it in Bernstein's direction incomplete. It'll be third down and seven. Good pressure up front by Tyler Lubke. Mark, you saw in the previous play, Wisconsin ran the power with the fullback kickout block. Now they fake the power and try to get the football to Bernstein out on the flat. But again, these Iowa linebackers, they are well-schooled, Mark. And there's something about keeping your best players on the field all the time and not substituting and putting in five or six defensive backs. Bob, there's not many stadiums in the Big Ten or in the country where the fans are right on top of you in the end zone like they are here in Iowa. Mark, no question. You forget about changing the play right now at the line of scrimmage. Just go with what's called. Third down and seven. Stocko out of the end zone. Throws a dart complete for the first down. It's Brandon Williams with a clutch reception, and he told Javon Johnson about it. Gotcha. First down and 10. Mark, first of all, it looked like Matt Roth jumped off sides. But again, I mean, the story of the game, quarters coverage. Are you good enough to throw the deep out? Again, Stocko throws this thing in there. You see, when you're responsible for the deep quarter of the field, you have to backpedal out of there. And again, Stocko makes an excellent throw. An 11-yard pickup on the play. First down and 10. Over the middle and picked off. Considine. He atones for the roughing the punter penalty a couple of series ago. That's his third pick of the year. This is not Wisconsin style, Mark. They are having to play left-handed because they cannot run the football. And I like John Stocko, but this throw right here, to me, was awful. Again, without a running game, when you put it in Stocko's hands to win it for you by throwing it every down, he is a mistake-prone guy, Mark. And meanwhile, uh, Considine Bob, uh, had three picks the last five games, Brownlee in a tailback, brought down by Erasmus James. You know what? You can't tell the story of James enough, Bob. Last season, he had to sit out because of the hip injury. People thought doctors, specialists, that he might be done. His football career may have been ended prematurely by that hip injury, but he went to see one of the specialists with the New York Giants medical staff who gave him a special set of rehabilitative uh, exercises to do. And got back on the football field and they low keyed his recovery during the offseason and he has really sprung back in nice fashion this year. Hinkle on the jailbreak screen. The skinny Hinkle carrying defenders all the way down to the 22. And Mark Zalewski the outside linebacker had a chance Mark to blow this up. If we let this roll you're going to see number 41 has a chance right here right there. Actually got blocked in the back right there by Scott Chandler. That should have been a penalty right there. 
Instead, it's a first down and 10 on the nine yard pickup. But you're right, Ed Hinkle is healthy, was not healthy at all last year except for the Outback Bowl in Tampa. Max lining up out of the eye. Here's the screen again. Hinkle again on the catch. Another jailbreak screen. This one taking Iowa down to the 17 where Robert Brooks made the stop. Mark, you wonder why the jailbreak is so prominent. First of all, it's a simple throw. I mean, that's an easy throw to the wide receiver. Second, the rules in college football, you're allowed to block downfield as long as the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. This one is diagnosed pretty good. They may have gone to the well too often, but in the pros, you are not allowed to block downfield with the ball thrown behind the line. In college football, that's a huge play. Second and five, Tate on the slant. Incomplete for Solomon, and it's a late flag. Scott Starks was in on the coverage on the play. Starks is a battler. He's the one that made the play that turned the season around for the Badgers. The hit fumble recovery for touchdown at Purdue. Wow. Mark, I mean, he grabbed him a little bit early. I don't see that as being a penalty. But a penalty it is. Let's take one more look at it right here. Oh, he was grabbing him there. I think he was, Mark. I think that was a legitimate call. Great replay. Nose of the ball in the six. 5.33 to go in the third quarter. Iowa threatening to score. It's Mickens. He's tackled at the five-yard line by Jim Leonard. Mark, and this whole drive goes back to John Stocko throwing the interception on first down. Sean Considine coming up with the interception. And the way this Iowa defense is playing, wow. If you're Wisconsin right now, hold them to a field goal to give yourself a chance to win. You can almost hear the Michigan Wolverines cheering for the Iowa Hawkeyes. If Iowa wins, Michigan would get the trip to the Rose Bowl. Second and goal. He was looking for Hinkle early and Tate still on his feet. How do you do that? Now they're going to say that he stepped out of bounds. Back at the 12-yard line. Which draws a chorus of boos from the sellout crowd here at Kinnick Stadium. Man, he's a bad Mark, isn't he? he is something now. <laughs> Started in the ninth grade in high school threw for all kind of yards in the state of Texas but what jumps out is just his escape ability to let this thing run I'm not sure maybe the whistle blew because they thought his knee was down he definitely didn't step out of bounds nor was his knee down but the whistle obviously had blown third down and goal Touchdown, Chandler. Mark, you're seeing the next great Big Ten quarterback in Drew Tate. Drew Tate with his third touchdown pass of the game. Chandler, meanwhile, with his second touchdown catch this season, and now Iowa taking a 14-point lead. From deep in the heart of Texas, Baytown, Texas, Drew Tate. And you remember a few years ago, Dallas Clark, the big tight end, a first-round draft choice. Now it's Scott Chandler. Mark, he did get that ball across the line. That is a touchdown. A couple of sophomores teaming up for the score. We'll be back. ESPN's College Football Saturday is presented by Pontiac and the first ever G6, the next official performance machine of the NCAA. And in part by Nivea for Men, more evolved skincare. 
a crisp and cool night here in Iowa City, Iowa. The Hawkeyes lead 21-7, trying to extend their home winning streak to 18 games. Wisconsin reeling a little bit right now as Brandon Williams will take a knee. I've got a feeling Bob Davies is going to come out, folks, with uh, Oklahoma at number two still. Just a guess. <laughs> First and ten. Stocko. Looking to make a play. Stocko brought down at the 26, and he fumbled it. Hawkeye ball. Wow. Tyler Luke, he recovers. Mark, obviously, this is reviewable. If you're John Stocko, you hope it is reviewed and overturned. We need to look at that again. I'll tell you, that ball's out. Yeah. That's a great job of stripping that football by number 15, Miguel Merrick. Now and Iowa working with another short field at the 21. John Stocko mark back to back turnovers throwing the football and now popping the football up. There's Brownlee cutting it back down to the 17 yard line. Iowa in the midst of a 14 to nothing run right now. Mark and you wonder right now does this Wisconsin defense have enough emotion left in them. I talked about what a roller coaster it's been. A week ago, they're the number one defense in the country rolling into Michigan State. They get gashed at Michigan State. Then they find out Ohio State beats Michigan. They go back up the mountain, and now all of a sudden they're back down. They've used up a bunch of energy, this Wisconsin football team. Big challenge ahead for that unit. Second down and six. They fake the jailbreak to Hinkle, and Tate is smothered back at the 27-yard line. The charge led by Hawthorne. And Crooks. Hawthorne, James, Jefferson, and Jonathan Welsh. Uh, three of those four guys in the front four uh, roommates in Madison, Wisconsin. And Crooks, a freshman linebacker, Brett Bielema that time, bringing him on the linebacker zone blitz. Not the type of homecoming that Bielema had in mind. Former coach here at Iowa, former player here at Iowa, third down. And 15 for the Hawkeyes. And you have to wonder if I was thinking field goal right here, Mark. We take underneath complete to Solomon. What a move. Oh, we put the brakes on. Solomon down to the 14 yard line, short of the first down by about three yards. But, Bob, there's something special about him when he touches the ball. And, Mark, I want to make this point. You know, I know Iowa's players get tired of hearing that label of a non talented football team and how they overachieve. Let me tell you something. Drew Tate. Clinton Solomon, the big tight end Scott Chandler. You have some emerging stars on this football team. I mean, there's some talent on this team. In comes a talented Kyle Schlicker, who last week set a school record with five field goals. This one coming from 31 yards out. And he drills it home, increasing the Iowa lead to 17 points. Can they hang on for a share of the Big Ten title with Michigan? The Hawkeye Nation approving right now. <laughs> Iowa leading 24 to 7 in the midst of a 17 to nothing run. 137 to go in the third quarter. Mark John Stocko with three turnovers, I believe, in the last six plays here in the second half. Two interceptions to go along with a fumble. Brandon Williams watches it bounce in the end zone. And once again, they'll start off on their own 20 yard line. And how does Stocco bounce back from the three turnovers that he's committed in the last six plays? Mark, and I'll tell you what, this guy is under the gun right now because there is no running game. We understand from Holly Rowe that Matt Bernstein is out for the rest of the game, I believe, with a leg injury. Obviously, 24-7, regardless who the running back is, you're going to have to throw the football. So with three turnovers and the last six plays against this Iowa defense, it's not going to get any easier. Been a great season for John Stocko so far. He's undergone a real personality transformation. But this would be his greatest accomplishment if he could lead his team back to victory 
out of the backfield. That's Booker Stanley with a nice pickup. And let's go downstairs for more on Bernstein from Holly. Well, guys, as you said, Matt Bernstein is out for the game. He has a right knee injury. Now, he injured it earlier in the game. They put a knee brace on it to see if he could go, and he is not able to go. That means Booker Stanley is the only tailback right now who has played in this game so far. They do have two backups, but they have not played in weeks. So right now the, the load falls to Booker Stanley to try to get the running game going. A yeah, real disappointment, Holly, for uh, Bernstein's parents. Uh, great people, Nancy and Steve. Uh, nice enough to give our spotter, Seth Jacobson, a lift from the airport here. Second down and two. Booker Stanley brought down right near the line of scrimmage. We've detailed and chronicled the injuries that Iowa's had, and now, uh, boy, the Wisconsin injuries at the tailback position mounting with Bernstein out of the game. Davis unable to go so far today, and not likely that we'll see him either. Mark, it is disappointing for Wisconsin. Obviously, a lot of injuries at the running back position, but I think Booker Stanley in this situation is normally their pass receiving pass formation back. Anyhow, he gives them a little more flexibility. He has good ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. Third down and two. The decision making of John Stocko becoming even more paramount here. Third and two, they hand it off. Stanley close to the first down. A loop, he made the stop, but it appears as if he might be a little bit short depending on this spot. He's just shy of the 30 yard line. Bob, do you think about going for it here? Well, Mark, I know this. Barry Alvarez have a lot of time to think about it here because this third quarter is going to end. I think you do, if you're Barry Alvarez, go ahead and go for it because it's slipping away from your defense right now. And I don't know if you can put your defense back out on that field right now. I would go for it. Wisconsin started off winning nine consecutive games until they ran into a hot Michigan State team last week. They want to end things on a positive note. And folks, don't forget tomorrow night, Sunday night football, Green Bay taking on Houston. The Texans have lost a couple of straight. Packers have won four consecutive games. And this game also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Coverage beginning with NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Mark, I think Iowa called that timeout right there. The reason there is a slight wind right now that Wisconsin is going into. So if Wisconsin and Barry Alvarez does decide to punt the football, they're punting it into that breeze. So again, excellent decision right there by Kirk Ferentz. Field position. Kirk Ferentz saying that uh, the turnaround point, the pivotal point of the season for them was after that Arizona drilling that they took down in the desert in Scottsdale. He told the team afterwards in the locker room, hey, we have to start practicing much better. We have to start playing much better. We have to start acting like a team. And they took his lead. And then during their bye week, another turning point for that. And he said that he challenged the defense to start creating more turnovers. They responded in kind, zealously. Fourth and one. And no Bernstein at the game, in the game at fullback, Mark. Stanley, they didn't get it. The defense comes up big for Iowa. And Mark, without Bernstein in there, you try to take the football off the line of scrimmage. And you have to wonder about that call with the penetration Iowa was able to get. And that's the last play of the third quarter. The Iowa Hawkeyes, 28-0 and leading after three periods, right now just 15 minutes away from earning a share of the Big Ten title. Iowa's defense coming up big to end the third quarter, giving the offense the ball on the 29. John Stocko forced to watch from the sidelines. Three critical turnovers made by him in the second half here. The tackle at the line of scrimmage on Simmons. No gain on the play. One Mark, more look at the fourth let's down. Let's go back and look at the fourth down. Matt Roth right here. I want you to watch him come off the ball. Look at the tight end right here. The tight end's looking at him. He's going to try to block down. But Matt Roth is so quick off the ball. Boom! The tight end has no chance. And you have to wonder. I understand why Wisconsin tried to get the ball to the tailback. But with the kind of quickness those defensive ends from Iowa have and the penetration capability, man, quarterback sneaker just handing that ball to the second fullback. Second down and ten. Pressure coming off the edge. Tate completes the pass for the first down to Matt Malloy. 
All the way down to the 18-yard line, picking up 12. Again, Drew Tate, excellent job. Again, the linebacker blitz, Matt Malloy, the open receiver out in the flat. Drew Tate is extremely accurate on the run when he throws that football, Mark. This kid's going to be a star now. You can put it down he right said now. Doug Flutie type, he huh? will be a star. Think about next year when Iowa gets some healthy running backs and there's some balance in the offense. And speaking of running backs, that's Brownlee. Once again, if you're just joining us, they have lost six players, Iowa has, to season-ending knee surgery. Three of them were their top tailbacks. Brownlee is now the man in there, the starter today. He is their fifth string tailback. A walk on Mickens in the ball game now. Knows the ball on the 18, and uh, Bob, they've really milked that jailbreak screen in the red zone tonight. And the other thing, Mark, they're milking this clock. As you can see, they're going to let this thing wind down every time with this commanding lead. That's Solomon in motion. He already has two touchdown catches. And it's Solomon time again, down to the seven yard line. Clinton Solomon. Here's a guy that last year had to go to junior college to take care of his academic situation and really prioritize his life. Mark, he was a quarterback in high school, played a lot of different positions, and you mentioned it. Was here as a freshman, academically had some problems, went off to Fort Dodge Community College, and he is glad to be back. I think this guy has a tremendous upside. He's about six foot three, not a burner, but I think a playmaker. Third down and short. Mickens the tailback. Push the fullback out of the eye. It's going to be Mickens. And it's going to be close. Andy Crooks filling to make the stop from his linebacking spot. It all depends on the spot here. Boy, Wisconsin's defense been on the football field for 26 minutes in the ball game so far. Iowa leading the time of possession 26 45 to 20 minutes and 38 seconds. And they're going to measure for the first down here. Talked about Clinton Solomon though. Uh, he's been a real uh, witness to how you should really appreciate football and not take for granted some of the wonderful things you get to enjoy playing Division One football. And uh, there's the measurement. That much short. Tate and Solomon, a snapshot of the future for offensive coordinator Ken O'Keefe there in the middle of them. Mark, and I think if you're Wisconsin right here, watch the cadence trying to drop you off sides because this field goal kicker from Iowa is automatic. Kyle Schlicker had five field goals last week. This isn't a bad time if you're out to just try to draw Wisconsin offside. Go ahead and take the sure field goal, which gets you up by 20 points. 12 28 to go. Iowa looking to go for the jugular here. Meanwhile, back to Solomon. He has uh, six games this year now for over 100 yards receiving. And they get the first down. Mark, that was a little bit too easy, wasn't it? Wisconsin Looked with those two big 300 pound defensive tackles. I mean that was a little bit easy And I know exactly what Barry Alvarez is thinking right now They're at the top of the mountain nine and oh a week ago. He does not want to limp Into the end of the season because you only remember how the season ends mark as good as it was yep. If you lose your last two football games particularly when you have an opportunity both weeks to go to the Rose Bowl that does not leave a good taste in your mouth. First down and goal to go for the Hawkeyes. This is Mickens weaving his way through traffic and brought down just inside the four yard line by Jim Leonard. It'll be second down and goal to go. Kirk Ferentz in his sixth year as the head coach. One and ten his first year, then three and nine, followed by seven and five, eleven and two a couple of seasons ago, and 10 and 3 last year and now looking to go 10 and 2 with a victory tonight and subsequently a share of the Big Ten title along with Michigan. It's something Iowa does a great job of, Mark, developing players. Their strength coach, Chris Doyle, does an outstanding job. Second down and goal. 
Tate into the end zone, incomplete. Ed Hinkle laid out, but couldn't come up with it. And now it's third down and goal. But getting back to that point, Iowa doesn't necessarily, Mark, recruit the highest of profile players. That doesn't mean that they don't have a lot of talent. They've got a bunch of guys off recent teams in the NFL, but I think they do a tremendous job of just player development, starting with that weight program. Chris Doyle is invaluable to this program, that weight coach. Third down and goal. Holloway in motion. Tate looking back the other way into the end zone for Chandler. Incomplete. And Chandler looking for a pass interference on Johnny White. And the fans are showering that part of the end zone with debris. Mark, and you see this play a lot in college football. Watch Chandler, the tight end. He's going to fake block. Tate's going to roll out, and then they're going to try to throw that football back across the field. Chandler, 87, sitting right there, sitting right there, freezing, going against the flow. And I'll tell you, he put some air under that. Could have been a pass interference call right there. Now Schlicker in to attempt the field goal from 21 yards out. Straight butter. Kyle Schlicker gives Iowa a 27-7 lead. 10-59 away from a share of the Big Ten title. Mark, I know one guy that thought it was pass interference right here, and that was Drew Tate. I mean, he's doing it all. He's going to be wearing a striped shirt when we come back. Our fourth quarter game track presented by Nivea for Men. And pivotal in this game, three turnovers by John Stocko. An interception to Johnson there and then one to Considine. And he had a fumble on this play. Ripped loose as he fell to the ground. And then Drew Tate able to capitalize with a touchdown pass to Chandler, the younger brother of Nathan Chandler, who was the former quarterback here at Iowa last season. 27-7, the Hawkeyes in the lead. And Iowa has scored on its last three possessions, a touchdown and a couple of field goals after that. Williams found a lane and is tackled at the 39-yard line. Certainly is at this point, Reese. 10.54 to go. A 20-point deficit for Wisconsin. Stocko under heat and sacked. Back at the 34-yard line by Babineau. There's a look at the current Big Ten standings after Ohio State defeated Michigan at the crib today, at the big house, at the... Uh, the horseshoe, 37 to 21. Second and 15. Booker Stanley made a nice move on Greenway. Got down to the 43 and eight yard pickup. It'll be third down and about eight to go. And Mark, it is amazing, as quiet in some ways as Iowa has been all season. And all the notoriety Wisconsin got early in the season or mid-season how these teams are kind of going in different directions right now but John Stocko has got a chance to make some plays here Mark finds a soft spot in that quarters coverage to Brandon White right near midfield at the 50 and he got the first down Mark you brought up a point earlier a guy that's really been missing is Jonathan Orr, the talented wide receiver from Wisconsin a guy that has great speed I mean the fastest guy on Wisconsin's football team only has 13 catches for the year at 47 as a freshman and Brandon White actually number eight is getting a lot more playing time certainly is in Stocko looking the other way that's Darren Charles with the reception and another Wisconsin first down at the 36 yard line don't forget tonight two great rivals on ESPN Florida State has won five of the last six in the series Goes to the ball at the 36. A huge mountain to climb for John Stocko and the Wisconsin Badgers. Avoids the sack and threw it incomplete. 
Good pressure up front by Chad Greenway from Mitchell, South Dakota, number 18. Mark, Iowa doesn't play a lot of man coverage, so when they pressure, they're going to bring these linebackers and drop the defensive end, Robinson, on a zone blitz. Watch the two inside linebackers cross. You see big 98 drop out. So when Norm Parker wants to heat him up, he's not going to play man coverage. He's just going to exchange the rushers and the droppers and do a little zone blitz scheme. That way Greenway pressuring. Played eight-man football in high school back in South Dakota. Second down and ten. Greenway again. Caused the fumble. And it's picked up by Babineau. Babineau wants six. And Joe Thomas saved the touchdown. Mark Norm Parker came with the exact same defense again, but from the opposite side. Watch Matt Roth now drop in coverage. The same call. Here comes Greenway up the middle, dodges the tailback, strips the ball. Tell you what, John Stocko has had a miserable second half. And this Wisconsin football team has had a miserable two weeks. But how about this Iowa defense? Yeah, Greenway grew up on a farm with 4,000 hogs and 100 cattle. And off the Simmons. Brought down just shy of the 20 yard line at the 22. But uh, talking about the success of that defense, uh, one of the leading defenses in the conference. And really in the country, Mark. As they come in 13th in the nation in total defense talking about Iowa and keep in mind not long ago as we look at Brett Bielema this Wisconsin defense was the number one defense in the country but it's been a tale of two different seasons these last two weeks second down in eight Drew Tate has gone the distance at quarterback for Iowa the sophomore a fine job even though he recovered from those Two interceptions early run down to the 22 yard line and for more on Chad Greenway let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Well guys Chad Greenway just came up with that huge defensive play and talking to offensive coordinators around the Big Ten I'm not going to name names but they have said they think he is the best linebacker in the conference. They prefer his athleticism the way he makes plays how physical he is. They say he's even better than A.J. Hawk who gets a lot of the attention. So Chad Greenway one of the most if not the most feared linebacker in the Big Ten by opposing coaches. It's interesting, Holly. Uh, talked about his background. Uh, I can remember his parents missed the Purdue game last year that uh, we did because there was a shipment and delivery of uh, about 1,500 hogs being made. I tell you what, Mark. And you know the contrast. Abdul Hodge, the other linebacker from Miami, your neck of the woods. These guys are inseparable off the field. Come from two completely different backgrounds. I mean, one guy, Chad Greenway, played eight-man football, <laughs> lived on a pig farm out in South Dakota. One guy from down in Miami. But that's the great thing about college football. Yeah. I mean, these guys come here. No way if they didn't come here and play together right. would they ever think they had anything in common. But they find out they do. Part of the student athlete experience that rarely gets uh, exposure. 7 17 to go. The clock running. Iowa with a 20 point advantage right now. And should they hang on to win this game, they would earn a share of the Big Ten title along with Michigan, who lost earlier today in Columbus to Ohio State. In comes Kyle Schlicker. Seven minutes to go on fourth down. Mark. This one coming from 34 yards out. He's two for two already today. Did I say three for three? Schlicker the kicker. Tax three more on the board, and Kirk Ferentz's team on the verge of improving to nine and two. Folks, immediately after the game, they're going to start getting the wrecking ball out and uh, knock down the end zone and do a few renovations to the house here it'll be complete for next season they're going to knock out one end of the end zone and make some refinements refurbish it a little bit Williams at the 10 takes it out to the 20 yard line well here's our Pontiac rivalry week flashback go back to 1991 in the time capsule Iowa at Wisconsin 
6-3 Wisconsin up Iowa ball 50 seconds left in the game Matt Rogers hits Mike Sanders for the game winning touchdown and Mike Sanders takes it home and Iowa wins it 10 to 6 and that was a team that uh, Brett Bielema played on but his defense hasn't fared so well today mind you they haven't been they have been put in some very precarious positions the result of some turnovers pass incomplete to Stanley and there's a late flag on the play this one's going to go against Matt Roth roughing the passer roughing the passer number 31 of the defense hit him in the head that's a 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. And Mark, we're going to get to see it. Yeah, I think that's an excellent call right there. Bob, have you ever had a player that was a bit of a, a maverick like this guy? Tell you what, and I mean that in a nice way. No, if you're going to play great defense, you better have a couple guys <laughs> like this. I mean, that's exactly what it is. And you know what? That kind of intensity he plays with, particularly the way he practices, that's contagious. And the other thing, the way he's developed in the weight room, you know, he came here at 225 pounds. These young players on Iowa's program sees the development he's made, so it helps you off the field as well. Here's Stocko, backside pressure. He completes it to Stanley. And Stanley got rocked by Tyler Lubke. Oh, he shot in there like a missile. And I tell you what, Lubke, this is a great story, Mark. This guy's a walk-on. He was a high school swimmer. He doesn't look physically you like those other me. defensive swimmer? line. He was a swimmer. 6-13 to go. Stocko going to go up top. And Williams was the closest Wisconsin receiver in the neighborhood. And it'll be third down and two to go. Mark, you know, both these football teams, Iowa, and Wisconsin will go to bowl games. Wisconsin, it looks like they'll go to the Outback Bowl. Iowa will go to the Capital One Bowl. Maybe not that much difference. Probably the way it was going to be when this day started, take out the Ohio State-Michigan thing. But what a difference attitude-wise going into those bowl games. I mean, Kirk Ferentz right now, they're going to enjoy every second an improving football team. Barry, on the other hand, they're going to limp into that bowl game. So both get rewards, but both going into it in a different mindset. No doubt. Third and short, and it's incomplete, intended for Owen Daniels. Just think, a couple of weeks ago, Wisconsin sitting there at 9-0, and undefeated. And then they go into Michigan State last weekend and lose 49-14, to and then follow it up with a 30-7 to score so far, with 6.04 to go. And... All in all, though, I don't know. Bob, do you think that people would have figured Wisconsin would have done this well this year, or is this about par for the course? You know, bottom line, they had a great season, Mark, but what happens when you're 9-0 and have it right there at your fingertips two weeks in a row and can't get it done? You're going to leave with that taste in your mouth. There's Booker Stanley. And Stanley's going to be brought down at the 42-yard line. You can only hope for the Badgers' sake that tailback Anthony Davis will be healthy and ready to play in their next game which will be in a bowl game and you might want to add Bob that both these schools have been heavily courted over the last couple of weeks by the different bowls because both these schools have a very loyal following of fans that travel very well You're right Bob. both these schools these are great fans Stocko stepping up and he's tackled at the 43 yard line by Jonathan Babineau Mark, we have to talk about this Iowa defense one more time. You know, Iowa's forced four turnovers today. They forced four turnovers last week against Minnesota. That's now 20 turnovers in the last five games. When you can force four turnovers a game, you are going to win. A defense that has responded to the challenge put out there by their head coach, Kirk Ferentz, comes up with another big play. Roth in on the stop and we talk about Ferentz and that man Norm Parker's done a great job it has been a very tumultuous time for him a trying time for him he lost his son Jeff uh, back in March uh, he also cut his foot in a boating accident eventually had to have his uh, toe amputated he gets around on a golf cart sometimes during practice but Norm Parker through it all has remained true to his family and to the Iowa program as well we'll be back with more. absolutely electric atmosphere here an air of anticipation as the day began in Iowa City for the Hawkeyes Badgers game and 
It's been all Iowa. 30 to 7. Drew Tate started off with a couple of interceptions early in the game, but quickly recovered. Third down and 13. It's been a miserable day for John Stocko, who airs it out again. Incomplete. Intended for number eight, Brandon White. It's been a shame, though, for Stocko, because he really has had a, a great season. A young man that underwent a, a big personality change. He's come a long way since being very reserved, very shy, almost to the point of feeling bad when he overtook his former teammate Matt Schaefer for quarterback last year on the on the two deep right Mark actually had mononucleosis in the spring got down to about 190 pounds or 180 pounds and uh, bottom line he is just not far enough along in his development that he can take over a game if Wisconsin doesn't have a running game and win it for him right now Wisconsin going empty flag down on the play and it's incomplete at the five yard line intended for Darren Charles. Well Merrick back there to break it up. Going to be a hold against Wisconsin but it won't matter because it'll be declined. Holding number 61 offense penalties declined first down. That is the sound, the chorus of 70 plus thousand happy people. We'll be back. A look at the inaugural Heartland Trophy up for grabs. It's a very hotly contested series between Iowa and Wisconsin. Wisconsin leads the overall series 39 to 38 with a pair of ties. It's the 80th meeting between the two. It's going to be tied up at 39 after this one, barring a miraculous comeback. That's Mickens on the carry. Out to midfield and let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe who's joined by Drew Tate's stepdad Dick Olin. Well Dick you have been Drew's coach since he was about four years old. What do you think of his development as a starting quarterback here at Iowa? Well they've done a great job. I, I enjoyed coaching him for four years in high school and he did a great job for us at Baytown Lee but uh, these guys have done tremendous things with Drew. What is it like watching him develop as a player this year? People didn't know a lot about him, but he has come on to be one of the top candidates. You know, I thought that he was a great quarterback. And, you know, and people ask me that from a coaching perspective. How's Drew doing? But, you know, I'm not his coach anymore. I'm his father. And I think these guys have done a great job. Just super. But saying that, you don't watch him as a coach. You watch him as a father. What do you say to him off the field to help him develop? Well, I, we just talk about things that occur outside and so on. And, and just, just reflect on what's happened before and talk about quarterback drills and things of that nature. He asked how they throw the ball dad and things of that. So, you know, but he's doing a great job. All right, what's it like as a dad to see him get a share of the Big Ten title? Oh, it's fun. Unbelievable. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Drew Tate, 15 of 24 tonight. 186 yards passing with three touchdowns against three interceptions. And as I mentioned, Bob, uh, showed a lot of poise in recovering from those two early interceptions. Look, you're right, and how about he commits and is going to Texas A&M. R.C. Slocum gets fired. And this is Mickens busting one up the gap down to the 27-yard line. A 17-yard pickup on the play. But there's a flag down as well. Offside, number five in the defense. Penalties decline. Result of the play. First down. Long night for Barry Alvarez. As his team looking at falling to nine and two now. But more troubling consecutive losses in back to back weeks. Mark, and if you're Barry, you're thinking about these opportunities to win Big Ten championships, play in the Rose Bowl. They are very difficult to come by. And you did not grasp for the opportunities the last two weeks of this season. First down and 10 for the Hawkeyes. Marcus Simmons brought down to the 28 yard line. Mark, we go around college football. There's a lot of great atmospheres. This Iowa program is setting here tonight. I mean, this is as good as it gets. I mean, they definitely have it rolling at Iowa. You mentioned earlier. They've got great fans and uh, my hat goes off to them. Kirk Ferentz has done a tremendous job. Amen and don't forget Florida Florida State coming up next. 
about Michigan? They're on that bus. Wonder if they're back to Ann Arbor yet. They can bring those roses out they had. They had to box those up after the game at Ohio State. They, they should send Kirk Ferentz some roses. Well, That's what they go. got to do. There you go. Second down and 10. This is Simmons. Simmons down to the 21-yard line. Doing it with an offense today that came in ranked 115th in the nation in rushing yards per game. Just 75 yards per game rushing. And this year on Kirk Ferentz's offensive line, there is no gallery. There is no Steinbach. But they certainly uh, held together when it counted. Pass protection, running when they had to. But I'll tell you what, there's a Norm Parker and there is an Iowa defense mark that's the bottom line reason they've really been successful and been so consistent. And again, the four turnovers created by Iowa's defense and Drew Tate able to make some plays and put enough points on the board. Simmons again down to the 18 yard line. With 122 to go and a little bit of frustration and boiling over now. Levon Rowan in the midst of that altercation for Wisconsin. Michigan losing earlier today in Columbus their first league loss and this is what the standings will look like when this game is over Iowa will be seven and one in league play along with Michigan they'll both share the conference title but Michigan will win out over Iowa because they won their head to head battle this year Mark Michigan going to the Rose Bowl Iowa going to the Capital One and Wisconsin to the Outback Bowl three teams at nine and two in the Big Ten. I know those made official yet, but that is the expected projection for Kirk Ferentz's team and Wisconsin and Michigan, respectively. Big Ten co-champs, right? Nothing wrong with that. That's pretty strong. A little piece is better than no piece. Those rings are just as big if you're <laughs> champ or co-champ, Mark. Barry Alvarez's team is enjoyed a lot of success this year uh, they saw the expansion of their stadium great luxury suites put in there in Madison uh, another great expanse and venue for college football and a lot of graduation for Barry Alvarez on the offensive and defensive lines in particular and Iowa don't forget uh, now Bob uh, Big Ten champs in two of the last three years You're right Mark don't forget that Florida Florida State coming up next last game for Ron Zook as the head coach of the Gators Ken O'Keefe the offensive coordinator there in front of Kirk Ferentz Drew Tate orchestrating that offense well in the second third and last quarter here and 101 to go and Mark you have to give Kenny O'Keefe the offensive coordinator from Iowa a lot of credit you know just a year ago they are known as the gurus of zone blocking do a tremendous job in the run game and now they throw it because they have to on senior day Bob a scene of jubilation on the sidelines Matt Roth with the war paint on 15 seniors in all with their final home appearance and I don't think you can ever really overstate how emotional that is you remember last year Bob we were here last year when Nate Caden came out literally in tears as he met his parents at midfield as they embraced and the scene repeated so many times and Mark I'll tell you what you have one team here that's glad it's over you have one team right here that wants to keep it going you have two teams with totally different emotions and you're right these seniors go out in style here at Iowa on fourth down and short Tate hands it off to the fullback Bush for the first down. And the Iowa Hawkeyes really have earned, quote unquote, in the literal sense of the word, a share of the Big Ten Conference title this year. And during injuries, six season ending knee injuries to different players, three of them, they're starting tailbacks. Right there's their weight coach, Chris Doyle. You can see How why could Kirk, you tell? Well, that's why Kirk <laughs> Ferentz is hugging him now. I promise you. You can almost hear the fans down on South Dubuque right now starting to celebrate. Here they fans come, Mark. Will storm the field. The final score here, 30 to 7. Goalposts have come down.
Kinnick Stadium, an ocean of black and yellow. an incredible journey for the Iowa Hawkeyes this year. Everybody thought that they were going to have a subpar season after those aforementioned injuries and after they got drilled in the desert by Arizona State. But Kirk Ferentz held the ship together with the help of a precocious sophomore quarterback right there, Drew Tate. The final score once again, 30 to 7. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Coming up next, scores and highlights on College Game Day scoreboard. On Senior Day, success for Iowa. From all of us here in Iowa City, here's Reese in Tallahassee. All right, Mark, Iowa getting a share of the Big Ten title. We are here in Joe Campbell Stadium for the Sunshine State Showdown between the Gators and the Seminoles is coming up in just a few minutes from here in Tallahassee. They've dedicated the field, named it Bobby Bowden Field here at Doak Campbell. Trev Alberts, Mark May along with me, Reese Davis. And I tell you what, guys, this is going to be a fantastic game tonight. But what a job Kirk Ferentz has done at Iowa. All the injuries, they've now got to share their second Big Ten title in three years. This team, Reese, finished the season at 9-2. and two. An unbelievable effort by Kirk Ferentz at, as a head coach at Iowa. Just think about this for a minute. In the last three years, Brad Banks is your starting quarterback, and then Nathan Chandler, and now Drew Tate. Look how he has had these young men progress, and Drew Tate, once again, the difference mark. An unbelievable effort offensively by Iowa against a pretty good Wisconsin defense. Yeah, but they were set up by their own defense and special teams. If you look at this offense, without Drew Tate, they wouldn't be able to move the football. They can't run the football. They're down to their fifth string running back. But I think the key here is special teams put the offense in good field position. The defense, which played wonderfully today, put the offense in great field position where they didn't have a long field to go to score. But that's also all up to their head coach, Kirk Ferentz, to get this team ready to play that type of football. And the reason the Hawkeyes had an opportunity to get a share of the Big Ten was because of what happened in the horseshoe in Columbus, Ohio. Michigan came in with a perfect Big Ten record. Ohio State 6-4. and four. They've been struggling, but in a 20-14 game, Ted Ginn Jr., the freshman, this would be his fourth punt return for a touchdown this season. That ties an NCAA record last set by Antonio Perkins. First set by Golden Richards, by the way. Ted Ginn Jr., that did it for Trestle's team. They rolled 37-21. to Great, great day for Troy Smith. Nearly 400 yards of offense. The Buckeyes pick up their seventh win, but because Iowa knocked off Wisconsin, Michigan has the tiebreaker over Iowa, so the Wolverines are off to Pasadena, sort of going in the back door there at the Rose Bowl, and you see what happened with Iowa, the game you just enjoyed.